All right, good evening, everyone. It's 7 o'clock. I'd like to call the uh, April 9th meeting of the Grammy Zoning, Planning Zoning Commission to order. If we could please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll do our commission check-in as we do. Um, I'm Mark Locke with the commission chair, and I'll start from my far right. Eric Lukingbeal, member. Paula Johnson, alternate. Eric Myers, vice chair. Bob Lavitt, member. Steve Muller, member. Brennan Shahan, member. We uh, have uh, Commissioner Chinney is out today. Paula will be sitting in, and also Meg is with us, and she participated in the last uh, s uh, session on one of our public hearings. Application, so she'll participate when we get to that part of it. Next on our list is uh, public session. Does anyone wish to speak to the commission about an item not on the agenda or subject to a public hearing? Uh, please come forward at this time. The, uh, what's in front of us is the just the sign. But if you okay. want to comment about the wall, we, we are just, welcome to. I just wanted to know what... Can you just introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Terry Spack. I live next to 280, and between the lawyer's office and 280. Um, I just wanted to know if that was going to be finished, that stone wall. Okay. Comments taken, and we can... I have heard. I do heard they're I just wanted to know what was going to happen. I heard that they're going to do something to it. So it's it might, that might come up in the discussion today at the sign. Okay. You're welcome to bring it up in the public hearing if you like to. Okay. In the public okay. hearing? Is There's that a this? There's a public hearing about the sign today, yes. Okay. So right. if it's, I never know when I can speak or not, so I don't no, know. That's okay. <laughs> the, wall is, the wall is a separate issue, yeah. but since the sign's on the wall, you're welcome. I would have you come back at the public hearing. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Good way to go. <laughs> Anyone else in the audience for public session? Anyone on Zoom? Okay. Not seeing anyone else for Zoom or the crowd. We will uh, close public session. Next, we move on to item number five, action on the minutes of March the 26th. I was not here, but I did see, I still call it a tape, but I saw the tape. Even though, Mark, it's not a tape, I know. Um, but I will let the commission, if there's any discussion for them, if there, if there is any. That's good to me. That's good to me. If not, I'll take a motion. So moved. Second. Got a motion and second to approve the minutes as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> abstain. I will abstain. The mission, minutes are passed. Next on our agenda is item six, uh, public hearings. We have three public hearings tonight. Uh, one is a continuation of a public hearing that we have uh, already in process for site plan modification and special permit uh, under the regulations for uh, local property at 563 Salmonbrook Street. Uh, it was noted that we did have a uh, walkthrough yesterday. Did we have minutes for that? Uh, not in this. Okay, so that'll be next. Yes. Okay. So uh, I guess I'll turn it over. Uh, I was not at the walkthrough, but I am familiar with the property. I have been over there before. I will uh, ask the applicant if you'd like to come up. I know you've been here, but uh, just have to have you introduce yourself. Again. John Conn, 563 Sam Brook Street. So I guess I'll uh, ask the commission, or if you have any, I'll let the applicant start off if you have anything, if you want to add from the, the, the visit or anything else since uh, the last meeting. I know Vice Chair Myers had gone through the meeting to do some. Yep, you yeah, know, I, I reviewed the minutes with um, Abby, Abby, and everything looks good. Uh, we had the site visit yesterday where we were able to run the, the mill. Um, we took readings at the property before as well. I don't know if everyone's been briefed on that. Um, so we had like 64 dB at the at the burn, um, which is the back property border, which is a you know data point. Um, yeah. 
So the reading was taken at the, the back border up there by the marker. And, and, oh, Sorry about that. Um, so um, at the applicant's request, I did have a site visit earlier in the day at 11 a.m. to take readings um, because that would be consistent with the draft condition of approval regarding uh, the operation of the sawmill. So at that back corner, um, without anything running, it was you know low 40s, so just background ambient noise. When the machine was turned on, it was the low to mid 50s, and it was you know the hum in the background, which I'm sure the commissioner the commission heard during the site visit. Um, at the 11 a.m. site visit, the there was no active cutting or sawing or anything, um, so I took the reading during the site visit in the evening, and at that time, when it was actually operational, it was low to mid-60s. Yeah, so 60 to 65 dB by the Yale Environmental Health and Safety Board is business office noise, and then uh, 60 to 70 is considered normal conversation. Vacuum cleaner would be 75 dB, which is uh, log of logarithmic scale dBs are exponential. Um, so so we're talking 65, and that was full throttle. I throttled it both times and got, I, was, I mean, people were there. So um, just to give you an idea of what we're, that the noise level we're talking about. So it's not, you know, now we have an understanding of what that is. Uh, everything else in bullets look good to me. I mean, I didn't have any. Any <clears throat> comments on the site plan any, uh, from staff review from the last time? Yeah, so um, looking through um, some of the conditions and then what was shown on the site plan, there was some clarification about the uh, parking spaces out front. And I know uh, during the site visit yesterday, it was noted that there was some equipment and um, trailers parked in the parking spaces in front of the building. Um, and as shown on the site plan, um, those are just open parking spaces. So there's there's nothing noted about you know equipment or parking for anything like that. The only thing in front of the building would be that equipment and finished product display area. Um, so during the site visit um, earlier in the day, the applicant had mentioned that he intended to move those trailers and equipment to the rear of the building. And please at any time jump in and correct me. Uh, to the outdoor storage area, finished slash semi-finished product area, um, where during the site visit, that's where logs were currently stored. Um, so if that is the plan, uh, I would suggest that the site plan be modified to clarify that there would also be equipment and trailer parking in that area. Um, and then, there was a note still about the berm on the site plan. So the commission saw the berm um, in person during the site visit, um, but it's still a little unclear from the site plan because it looks like the fence extends the entire way. And I understand that's not you know, the, the point of that. You know, The fence would be replacing the, where the existing stockade fence is, and then the berm would pick up where it's currently located. So just those adjustments to the site plan. With another fence, a fancier fence on the restaurant side. <clears throat> and the, the site plan does show a fence uh, from the front corner uh, back behind the equipment and finished product display running the, the length of the property line, but it does stop short of that back corner. So you can kind of see it outlined in red there. It extends right to the, you know, to the end of the log storage area. Right, that would be like a one by 12 board, stain board fence, a nice display fence that we would put up. Abby, has there ever been a sound complaint from the neighbor? No, we have not received any noise complaints. Oh, okay. <coughs> Are there any questions? Or? Um, you know, I just noted in the site walk yesterday that the equipment was out front in the parking spaces. Are there any specific number of parking spaces that are designated for the antique shop, or is it just for the building itself? It's based on the zoning regulations, it's for the building itself. Mm -hmm. And, and um, how many are required yeah, so for public access? Yeah, so based on the square footage uh, of the building, all of those spaces up front would be required. Required. Yes. Okay. 
Right, so that even in the north corner where you had the four trailers mm -hmm. and you talked about maybe leaving them there, right. they can't be left there. Those are parking spaces. Can't be vacant. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all the all the whole front rows need to be vacant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Understood. That's no problem. Easily done. <clears throat> One thing I'd like to bring up, um, you know, and I've been looking at this, and I, I watched the uh, the recording from last time, not the tape, and, and the discussion is, I went back to some fundamentals, which is our regulations. And uh, this started out as an outdoor storage application, correct, Abby? Yes, and for some outdoor for activities. For some outdoor yep. activities. And we've got the retail sales, and I went back, and what I'm struggling with is our regulations today. This is the business zone, right? It's not the industrial zone, it's not a manufacturing location. Uh, I'm having difficulty seeing where your sawmilling operation outside fits into our regulations. And I wanted to, to ask that with the commission as well, because again, we're, we're, it's retail sales, commercial services, you know, like, um, like bank, uh, financial, like not, not, uh, not manufacturing, and I think it also has a, uh, Photography studios, uh, and if I look at the other restaurants are in that zone. So if I look at the type of businesses are in there, it's not really. I'm I'm kind of struggling with that piece of it. You know, we're talking decibels and this, but and I'm not commenting on the merits whether it's a good idea. But we have to we have to follow our regulations. And um, I kind of wanted to step back before we keep asking a lot of questions about this about discussion with both the applicant and the commission why we have the public hearing still open if we really are following our regulations when it comes to the, you know, I saw milling, I saw the pictures that were submitted, you know, it's custom saw milling, uh, wood's coming in, and, you know, if that was done in a retail zone, and, and you know, was that something, if somebody brings in a grinder to grind up scrap metal in the parking lot, I mean, that's not really the intent of So that's kind of something I wanted to bring up to the commission, and, you know, the applicant can come in, of course, for sure. Anybody in the commission has any other thoughts about the, the regulations themselves? Yeah, I have, thinking about this, um, there's a difference between woodworking and a sawmill. And the woodworking part of your business, I think, belongs in the zone. That is compatible. Having your uh, options of having your boards that are already pre-cut that you've done off-site and having them layered up there so somebody can come in and pick out the right board for their, for their counter, that makes sense. But the actual sawing and bringing in piles of, of raw lumber does not seem to me to be, well, in our regulations it says, um, suitable location for use, uh, neighborhood compatibility, environmental cap, uh, cap capability. And I think when you look at the neighborhood, you have a tire operation, it's all inside. Next door you have the possibility of two restaurants. I'm thinking, and, and understand, I'm all for what you're trying to do, but I'm thinking that the sawmill part, if you could do that somewhere else, it would be just golden. I don't know whether that's a possibility. Yeah, predominantly it is It is done off-site. This is not a primary, I don't primarily saw there, right? So uh, kind of recap to the first meeting, there was an 80 by 40 car uh, shell, what's the brand name? Clear span. clear span, I'm sorry. Clear span, there's an 80 by 40 clear span we wanted to put up so we could do some, you know, do this inside when we needed to. Um, the commission said they didn't like those type of buildings, which was understood and, and taken. So we're currently, like we had clear span out there Thursday to quote out the steel building, right? So we're looking at our options for a nice, like a Morton style building. Mm -hmm. I got a Morton quote, which is very expensive. Uh, so clear span just gave us a quote and now we're going out for concrete quotes because that was rather expensive through clear span. So the idea is not just to do this in the parking lot. I mean, you used to be over there, right? <laughs> that's, not a, that's not a sustainable thing that we want to do, right? So, so primarily it's done off site. There are times where we do you know, mill there, which is, which is why we're here trying to have this discussion, but I'd like to bring that inside and close so it's not a, you know, no one is bothered by it, right? Um, it will take a little bit of time to get that building. It's expensive. And so this is kind of like a bridge gap to get there. Uh, I want to do a clear span, but I understand that you don't want to see that type of building. It's understandable. You know, I like I like a nice building too. So, so we'll get there. It's just going to take a little bit of time. I guess uh, to get back to the commissioner's point, there, you know, the, I, the the business is great. You know, live edge 
you know, boards are wonderful, you know, all kinds of great woodworking purposes for that material. And the sawmill aspect of it is, you know, if you're only doing very limited, then it seems like why would you need to invest a lot of money in a big structure to put a sawmill in it oh, if you're only sort of way to as well. You know, so then if you put a sawmill inside, it's still a sawmill. You know, most sawmills are under a roof and they're sawing, mm -hmm. you know, thousands of board feet a day. So it's not zoned to be a sawmill, you know. So even if you put it inside, you're saying you're just going to ramp up your production and sawing because now it's inside. So I'm kind of torn with the whole aspect of is it a woodworking sawmill or is it a sawmill? Yeah, exactly. You advertise that it's a sawmill on your... Custom sign, sawmill, I, I, dimension I, I, I do portable milling all the time. Yep, we saw logs on all the time for people. That's right. portable, right? I take it everywhere I, I saw on site. Just did a job in North Granby Saturday. Well, portable, yeah. you know, that's a whole not. Then you're just parking it on the property and then you're hooking it up and you're leaving and you're sawing correct, correct. in someone's yeah. yard. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That's right. That's I, I do struggle do. with the whole sawmilling aspect because you're bringing in all that raw material. You know, it's gotten way out of hand. You know, you've admitted that, you know, yeah, Someone came right. in and brought in, you know, truckloads of material, mm -hmm. and right. you're trying to confine it to a 30 by 60, which is still, you know, that's a substantial pile of logs that you could put there, you know, 20,000 board feet in a mm -hmm. size 30 by 60, you know, 12 feet tall. So I don't know, you know, you're looking to saw on a yearly basis, and if you hit a certain level of sawing, now you're a sawmill, you're not a woodworking shop. Yeah, I mean, that's not the primary use, and, that, and we, I thought we put that in the in the clause, right? Uh, I think so, to, to and we have to go by the regulation, right? So mm -hmm. if you look at our business C2 regulation, which I went back again several times to look at, I'm making this up. If the regulation said you could have a Coke machine, but it didn't say you could have a Pepsi, it said no Pepsi machines. Even though you, you know, I'm going to get my Coke contract, but right now I just need my Pepsi contract. We, we couldn't allow that, right? Because it doesn't, the regulation is not clear. I'm not using a good example, but I'm trying to, it, the regulations have to specifically allow it. Am I saying that, Abby? They're in, <coughs> am I saying inclusionary regulations? So they have to state what it is. And if it doesn't allow for this type of production, even if we all of us say it's a great idea, we can't allow it because the zone doesn't allow it. We have to go through a different process where it's called a text amendment where um, an applicant brings it in. So, that's what I'm bringing up today, um, you know, what Commissioner Shane and Johnson are also saying. So um, I just wanted to bring that out today before we kept going on, that I have a concern about it, even meeting, this is again, the sawmill criteria part portion, even meeting the underlying allowable uses in the zone. Let me try and explain why I am troubled by the sawmilling aspect of the operation. Our regulations require us to make a determination that the proposed use will not have any detrimental effects upon the public health, safety, welfare, or property values, and that the proposed use will not conflict with the purposes of these regulations. The way I look at it, we have sat as a commission since sometime in the 1950s. Paula and I and others on the commission have sat and wrestled with these ideas and when we came up with commercial zones and industrial zones we thought there should be a clear distinction between what is commercial and what is industrial when I toured your property and looked at the sawmilling operation the, the conclusion I ended up with even though I am sympathetic with your position my conclusion is you are trying to shoehorn an industrial operation onto a site which is zoned commercial. It, to me, it's, it's very simple. I don't think it would be appropriate for the, this commission to approve the kinds of uses you've got that involve sawmilling. Unfortunately, I think you need to do it somewhere else. I wish we were not here because if you, if you had come to the commission before setting up this operation on the property, I think we could have given you very clear guidance that sawmilling was not something that we were interested in seeing. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. I don't know whether, obviously, my remarks don't bind any other member of the commission or the commission entirely. But that's the way I look at it. Meg? Um. 
think there's something to scale to. Like if, to your point, if you're going to build a large structure, it's probably going to happen more, I would imagine. But industrial scale versus business is very different. Any comments from the staff side about what we're talking about? Do you concur with our reading or my with the regulation for C2? So in one of my earlier memos, I brought up um, that this use, the sawmill specifically, would have to be accessory. Um, and at a certain point, it's a question of when is it no longer accessory? And even if it is accessory, is it appropriate outside? Um, so I think that's really what this comes down to. Is it an accessory? And is it appropriate, yeah, outside, as an outdoor activity in that zone? This is the commercial zone. I think it's important for us to, to realize that. So if I could just summarize what they ask is that, so we have outdoor storage, correct? Mm -hmm. And then the retail sale of display outside, is that mm -hmm. correct? And then the other, the last part was the, the sawmill. Mm -hmm. Those are the three mm -hmm. asks. And then we have this conformance in general to the site plan, mm -hmm. the parking spaces and things mm -hmm. we talked about. Yeah. Is, is the commission, so again, while the applicant is here, it sounds like the storage aspect and the retail sales display outside, but those, I read the regulation, those seem to me to fit okay. mm -hmm. in what we have in other parts of that yeah. commission. And Abby, the site plan questions that, that uh, we raised today, if we did close the public hearing, can we still have the applicant as a condition modify to what we talked about or we have to keep the hearing open for a site plan? So the commission um, has in the past approved a site plan subject to making specific revisions. So um, if that's something the commission is inclined to do, I'd say the specific conditions would be adding a note that that outdoor storage area finished the last uh, semi-finished product area was to also include trailer parking um, and equipment storage. Um, and then the um, one of the number three condition would the A would have to be modified to just reflect that the modified language on that outdoor storage area including the trailer and equipment parking. And then it could be conditioned on uh, clarifying the, uh, the location of the berm and the height. Would that be something acceptable to you if the commission went that way? Yeah, that for those uh, those additions. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we, we spoke about that. I mean, yeah, okay. yesterday as well. Yeah. And then what do we say mm -hmm. about sawmills? Do we have we just have a, a statement that this, there is to be no sawmilling? Mm -hmm. Well, so I don't so. Okay. This is where I get hung up. I, I've spent some time in the regs, and I have the regs here, and Abby brings up the point about accessory use. So what, and we spoke to this a little bit when I was chairing the last meeting. Um, I, I believe if a customer were to walk in to his store, which sells live edge slabs, among other things, but that's his primary business, that's what he seems to want to focus on, and somebody says, I need a live edge slab, and there's not one on the retail showroom, but he, he walks out and he says, that log looks great. Cut me three inches out of the middle. That, to me, feels like accessory use. And I could make a case for him to be able to do that. But no other milling. It has to be directly related to just the sale of live edge slabs. It can't be to mill other people's lumber. I know the sign that's in front says, we'll mill your logs. I wish the sign said, we'll mill your logs on your property. I, I pulled <laughs> that log. <laughs> it's not portable. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's not I was inviting about that, you know, people to go dump tractor gotcha, trailers gotcha, worth gotcha. of logs on your property yeah, to mill them. We could change that. That's no problem. But uh, I wasn't it, thinking about that at the time. I, I know it seems extremely difficult for us to um, craft something that the ZEO officer can deal with. This but, is what I'm thinking, yeah. But regardless, it does seem reasonable to me that for a very limited use, even more limited than might be in here as a recommended language that we talked about, the hour, 
within a small window per day, even limiting it beyond that as a form of a compromise to avoid the, any perception whatsoever that he's running a commercial sawmill. Um, if, you know, I, I don't know, I'm throwing it out there. I, I do struggle with the accessory use clause uh, for the C2 zone and whether or not resawing an existing slab he might have in his showroom. Uh, Fitting it out, changing its dimensions, or otherwise is an accessory use. I don't uh, know. And Commissioner Myers, I agree with you. That's woodworking. That's and that woodworking. fits yeah. with it does. The, the zone of it. But, you know, that sawmill is, you know. We'd have to figure out a way to limit the heck out of It's that. built to do more than, you know, but I guess, one but board a week. Agreed, which is why he has it to bring to other people's right. locations. Yeah. Right. So, Eric, how do you, how do you, and, and I, I'm with you where you're trying to go. Having a pile of 15 or 20 or 30 tree log tree trunks big, that's a sawmill. I, yeah, I agree. So, yeah. do you number that he can have four of them? I mean, there again, we're dealing with our poor enforcement officer. We can't have him going over every week, and it's a pain for you, and it's a pain for everybody. How many logs do you have? To, oh, you have four. That's fine. So I. This is where, how do you how do you draw that line? I don't know, but that's why I wanted to bring it up. Yeah. With, I think we owe it to have a good, healthy discussion okay. on all the angles, yeah. and then we can I, I think it's woodworking, which, I mean, if you go to a big box store, there's a 10-foot two-by-four. I need to cut in half. They do it right in the store. Mm -hmm. That's woodworking yeah. Yeah. versus bringing in the tree and making a rough cut for me. So I think you can have that accessory. Does it have to be outside? Uh, I think we're going to struggle with some of that. If it was all inside doing that, like like the box stores. Um, yeah, but that's the sawmill that he has is a portable one, so right. I can bring to, yeah. to other people's properties. It can't. It's too big to be inside. I mean, if it's, it's a single well, cut, I mean, I, I think we can have a discussion mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes in and buys something off. I don't know if you buy stuff off the shelf in your store there, but you know, I need this cut to size. You know, fine. I would agree with you. So that's, you probably do that inside. I think we're going to maybe not. They're, they're big. But I think that's something that we should mm -hmm. we should have a discussion about. Well, the log storage area, Paul, you brought it up. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, that's all of an area of 15,000, 20,000 board feet if you packed it full of logs. Yeah. That's, again, that's commercial sign. That's, that's not yeah. custom sign. I mean, if it's limited to an hour a day, it's not anywhere near industrial sign. I'm one guy. I mean, you can buy yeah, but any why, why do you need that kind of volume of inventory sitting out there? Oh, because when you get an opportunity to get like walnut, you get it. You know what I mean? You don't say no. You have to, you know, if, if you have an opportunity to get black walnut from North Granby, which I, I did, sure. I got to get it. That's, you know, that's very important. It's that unique 48 inch log that you need that you're like, this is going to be a beautiful slab. So that's kind of, you know, the, the unique part of it. It's like you, you, you don't get it every day, right? It's not like we're not selling a uh, uh, florin. You know what I mean? So right. like you, you're not looking for pine and taking truckloads of it, but when you get that unique piece, you need to get it. So that's kind of, you know, part of the unique craftsman of oh, walnut oak. You know, that that pile that's back there that's being removed, that'll be gone. The log truck couldn't come last week because it's gonna rain, but that'll be gone and it'll be cleaned up. So I mean, maybe another site visit when it's cleaned up, so you can kind of get a good idea of what it looks like, and you know, then and we're limited to eight feet high. You know what I mean? As part of the, the fencing height, where it's gonna be eight feet high. You know, so it's, we're not trying to make it, you know, a mess, but you're not running an industrial commercial sawmilling operation for an hour a day. <laughs> that ain't happening. No, but I, I don't, think, you don't even saw every day. You know I think what we're saying is that you would be, again, I'm going to use my box store. I come into your your store and I'm like, I like this wood. Yeah, can you yep. trim a couple? Recut an easel. Yep. But not, I got these walnut logs for an hour a day. I'm going to make slabs out of them. That's the sawmill, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's the distinction we're looking at is, Understood. We'll, we're looking at, you know, the woodworking aspect versus the sawmilling aspect. Okay. Okay, and I think that's, if I understand the convention, right? Yeah. Let's well, your discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, I, got, I just gotta say, I'm, I'm just not persuaded that Limiting something to an hour a day or two hours a day converts something that's industrial into something that's not industrial. To me, it's still industrial. And if we're going to have any credibility with the public and with other people who would want to occupy a commercial zone with industrial activities, I think our credibility is shot. 
the next guy can come in and say, well, yeah, it's kind of industrial, but I'm only going to do it now and then, you know, an hour a day, half an hour a day. I, I think that puts us in an impossible position. To me, it looks industrial, it feels industrial, and to me, the, a one-hour limitation just doesn't really cut it. I'm sorry, it, it just doesn't. Just, uh, we'll get some more questions, but since it is a public, our public hearing is still open, I will ask if there's any members of the public that would like to speak on this um, application, please come forward. Anyone uh, on the Zoom? Can't see, but I'll ask. <coughs> come on up. And just please introduce yourself and address. <clears throat> My name is Jeff Salinardi from 17 East Street. Again, I'm going to reiterate, <clears throat> been in the last few of these meetings, I feel the board is really struggling to come to some kind of consensus to, like you said, shoehorn. In the zoning regulations, you have industrial, and it lists the word sawmill. That's an industrial zone. This is not an industrial zone. You're looking to put a special permit to allow an industrial activity. I don't even think the board has the right to do that. I mean, I'm not an attorney standing here, but I think you're really stretching to put an industrial activity onto this property. And I feel like we're, <laughs> you're doing a lot of, you're just sort of, you're really trying. I give you credit for that, but at the end of the day, when and maybe you can do a show of hands. When you all visited out there, who would want that in their backyard? Anybody on the board? I mean, it's a disaster. I mean, sorry, it's, it's been long enough. It's been noted that the property has had problems. The board has said this property needs to get cleaned up. Quite honestly, in my opinion, and I don't live right there, thankfully. I live a couple houses away. It's gotten worse. Now there's a gigantic pile of wood chips rotting and molding. And I don't know if that's the berm we're talking about, but I don't. I hope that's not a berm, the berm, just a rotting pile of wood chips. Because you know these people who live beside me here, they're going to put up with, like I said, the mold and the bugs and the rodents and whatever else that wants to live in that. Now they got this 12 foot pile of wood chips. I mean, like nothing is being done, call it correctly, it's just, it's going from bad to worse, and I think the board really needs to settle in and figure out, you know, look at the track record of what's going on on this property. It, it's not that great, you know. It, it sounds like a good idea, but in, in practice, I really feel bad. I feel bad for the tire shop next door, I feel bad for the restaurant next door. You know, when people go there to buy, get a bagel in the morning or an omelet, are they going to be smelling rotting mulch this summer? I mean, come on. Anyway, that's, uh, that's what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Brittany Ashmore. We live at 20 Sawmill Road, so this is our backyard. We don't really understand what's going on here. We missed the last meeting, but um, a couple questions, because honestly, I'm a little lost. What is the berm? Like, what does it do? Because it is just a bunch of wood chips, and then it goes all the way over. But there's a huge, like, it's all, all across. And then, like, is there a point to it? I don't understand if it's supposed to be doing something over there, but. I think that's like our biggest problem, that and the logs, because it's our entire backyard and we don't understand what it's doing. So that's kind of our only problem. Thank you. Yeah. Was there anyone on Zoom? Bring it back up then, the applicant wants to come back up. If you 
want to address? Anything you want to comment on? Uh, no, except that we're still cleaning up. You know, and the works just beyond the fence hasn't been put up yet, and I've sent letters and knocked on doors, and I, I'm no, just sorry I haven't spoke. Not knock once. I have. No, I haven't tried. Just, I have, and I spoke to your neighbor as well. Just keep so, just a oh, question, yeah, yeah. please. So we can recoup and talk, and so we, you know, we can settle on something that you like appearance-wise. Um, Jeff, I think you should disclose your history with me and the property. Excuse I me, sir, that's oh, just, just the commission. Yeah, I think that uh, Jeff should disclose his history with the property and his bone to pick with me. He hasn't told you guys what the, his bone is with me. Uh, he's been trying to buy the property that I own that abuts his property, and he's come over to Scraw a couple times and yelled at me when I first bought the place. So I think that everyone should be aware of that. I have no further comments. So I have a question. We, the question of the berm came up. And when I was there yesterday, it, it did look like just saw, saw chips. And Brad, you know more about forestry than I do. That really isn't a berm. It's a pile of saw chips, right? It's just, uh, the wood chips are just pushed up into the form of a yeah. berm. And you, you talked about putting plantings on there, but those wood chips are going to steal some as they rock and it robs so much nitrogen from any type of soil. They're going to kill any plant that's they're going to burn up you know, if you try to plant them on wood chips. Are they going to so. get mold, mold, moldy like when I open I, I don't know about mold, but they'll eventually break down turn into topsoil over 10, 15 yeah. years, so it will be topsoil eventually. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any other comments? No. Abby, anything else? You, no. Any, anything else you'd like no. to? No. Can, I think we've had the public hearing for quite. Is there anything we, we don't need to keep, the applicant, if we do the site plan, can come back? It's a condition, right? We don't need to keep the hearing open. Correct. Back. So the only thing would be if the commission has any questions about any of the conditions for clarification or anything else that needs clarification before the discussion starts. So I have a, a if this has come as a whole package. Can we approve the storage of the things for sale, his display, his parking, his woodworking, and say the sawmill is not acceptable? Mm -hmm. So we can do that. Yes, yeah, so that's, and that's why the conditions are broken out. Okay. Um, so there could be modifications to the conditions. Okay. I want to make sure we understood mm -hmm. that. Good. And then obviously the site plan would have to be, be revised changed. to reflect, yeah. Yeah, reflect that. Anyone else in the commission have any clarification points to feel the need to keep the hearing open? I, I, for one, would like to suggest we close the hearing so we can start deliberations because I think we have a lot of uh, items to go over internally to the regulations and to all the testimony and information we've been presented. But agree. Agree. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have anything else? All right, so do you have anything else? No. Nope. Okay. Then if uh, that in public speak. Come on up. Paul Bannett, this on the road. So I, I just would like a clarification of the definition of what the berm is, what it's supposed to be made out of, what the purpose of it is intended for and how it's supposed to help the ecosystem or environmentally friendly, water runoff, what is the purpose and the definition of the berm? What's it supposed to be made out of? Is it supposed to be made out of, uh, you know, wood I, I chips and the top soil? Procedurally, or? the berms we have in town are normally made from soil with plantings on them, correct, Commission? But not wood chips. Uh, we have not approved one made of wood chips, to my knowledge. And the purpose of the berm would be? There are buffers from other properties and they also for also transition for uh, sight lines from property. If you look at the stop and shop in front of it, that's mm -hmm. a berm. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you. Okay. If there's nothing else and without, without any objection, we will close the public hearing. The commission has 65 days to come to its decision. Um, most likely we'll start a little bit on that later this evening on the agenda. Thank you very much.
Okay, next on our agenda is uh, an application for a special permit under the regulations for signs uh, to aid Samabrook. Vice Chair Myers, can you please read the call to the hearing? Okay, there will be a public meeting hearing conducted by the PNZ on Tuesday, April 9, 2024 at 7 p.m. in the Granby Town Hall meeting room, 15 North Granby Road, to hear and consider the following item. Application seeking a special permit under zoning regulation section 8.6.13 for two small wall-mounted signs that exceed the maximum square footage for property located at 280 Salmon Brook Street, CC Zone. At the hearing, interested persons may appear and written communications will be received. Copies of the proposals are on file in the Community Development Office. The applicant or their representative here? Uh, she's on Zoom. Up on the Zoom. Yes. All right. Just uh, please introduce yourself and uh, address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Sherry Thompson, and uh, this is for 280 um, Salmon Brook Street. We have the information from staff that you presented, so, but if you could, uh, for the hearing, if you could just walk us through what your proposal is for the signs. Uh, so my client would like to put a flat um, signage on the structure, the stone structure that is being built, um, both at, um, I'm sorry, here. there's two entrances that they would like to um, have approved. My apologies. I think they should have to show themselves. It's, it's, on, the, it's on the North Salmon Brook Street side yeah, and also on the northern side. Of I'm not sure what other information that you need from me. Um, our the signs lighted. I mean, it's, uh, you say North Sam the same, You have two. No, it's it's Salmon Brook Street. It's, okay, because it says North Side and South Side. Is that what you're referring to when you say North Salmon Brook Street? Yeah, North and South. Yes. You have, two, you have two entrances, correct? That is correct. Okay, so you're looking to put one on the south entrance and one on the north entrance. Correct. Okay. Um, just maybe just go through again, just for the record, what they're made of. Which you're, you know, you said there's no lighting to them, so are they reflective? What's just go through the composition there's, of them. Um, there's no reflections. <coughs> it's just a flat panel um, that is 156 inches by 30 inches that would be attached just by um, tack ponds. It's flat against the surface, doesn't stand off um, at any sort. Uh, it is just a three millimeter ACM, which is a lightweight um, aluminum composite. Um, and it actually will be two panels tiled um, in, right in the middle. But it will be just attached to the surface very flat. Are you, are you going to be... Um, doing anything to the wall behind the sign, or is it going to stay just the way it is now? No, we we're not going to be doing anything to the wall structure. We will just um, be applying the, the ACM sign to the wall structure, um, very simple, with just um, uh, some tap, tap ponds and screens. If I can clarify, so yes. while the sign company won't be doing anything to the wall okay. uh, specifically, there are the the wall is not finished yet. It will be painted. Right. Um, so yes, it is not in its finished state. Okay. So I guess the question question would be before the signs are installed, will you be finishing the wall? And do you know how that finish will be? She's the sign person, so she will I know, I, st I, I stumped you. So yeah, I she doesn't know. That's okay. Well, <laughs> that's a question that uh, we don't necessarily need to answer for the sign, but I would like that. If you do talk to your client, we'd like to get that packed to uh, staff sometime. Um, okay. we've, we've had that raised. You may hear it tonight in the hearing, and other people have raised that. So since the sign is going on the wall, I think that's an appropriate question for the commission to ask. Um, okay. Any other questions from the commission? 
I can see why you need two signs because of two entrances, but I'm not sure that there's really been an explanation for why they need to be so much bigger than uh, what this, the regulation permits. The regulation is not bigger than nine square feet, and these are going to be 32.5 square feet, which is more than three times as big. Uh, I haven't seen a markup of what it would look like if they did conform with the uh, regulation. And there was scale drawings provided. Well, they're scale drawings of... Just not to scale. They're not to scale. They're not to scale. They're drawings no, of what the finished 32 by 5 would look like, but I don't see something with the, with the 9 foot would look like. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, what basis we have when the next guy comes in and wants to sign more than three times the size of this sign to say no. You know, we, we did approve oversized signs for the uh, the grand, grand, which is oh we did for the yeah. grand, which is bigger. Yeah. Oh, which That's is even way bigger. back. That was way back from the road. Though, okay, so. I was I was going to say the medical, yeah. you know, urgent care center because that's like a medical emergency thing. The grand is before my time, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I mean, we should probably be redoing the regulation if we're not applying it. Well, I think the regulation's there for. Uh, people to have the opportunity to put in a nine square foot sign without having to have fill out any paperwork mm -hmm. come before us get a zoning application. Right. I think right. it serves the town very well for most small businesses. I think a large business like this, it is a very large property, as Abby pointed out in the application, it's a thousand square feet of frontage. Um, the, the signs as big as they feel like on paper when juxtaposing them against the, the, the regulation, they really are dwarfed by the property. Uh, that's just my thoughts on it. Now you need them big enough that you can see to go by, but I'm wondering whether it's three times the size, or what did you say, Rob? More than three times. More than three times. Not, whether, yeah. Nine square feet is what's permitted yeah. by regulation. Yeah. This is so 32.5. Yeah. And three times would be 27 yeah. square feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some, but again, uh, Paula, we've, we've approved recently, even okay. the back sign. I just understand. Approved. I understand, and it came up fine. Yeah. Yeah. Sure did. Yeah. It's all about, to yeah. me, it's the yeah. fit and finish and the quality. Exactly. That's about the placement and placement. Placement and, and mm -hmm. I, when I went by and I looked and I saw the picture's not to scale, but it does give you a sense. And I thought, well, yeah, I would like it smaller, but then I happen to like smaller signs. <laughs> Brennan? Oh, I have no comment. Eric? I, I looked at the, the signs and the photos and I did not have a negative reaction, so <laughs> yes, it's okay. Yeah, it fits. It fits. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it fits. It's relative to the scale of the project. It is relative to the scale of the project. Anything else that you'd like to comment before we open it up to the public? Does any member of the public wish to comment on this uh, application? Please come forward. I think John got to come forward. This is Dorothy. That's a sign for that. I'm in the war, war, war zone, I call it, between 280 and the law firm. Um, I just, uh, it was my impression that that wall was going to look similar to the, the wall that used to be near the um, law firm. So I don't know if it's, you know, the wall, the, there used to be a um, brownstone, and I don't know if that's the color of what that wall is going to look like, and whether it's nicely going to be painted. I don't know. They never, saw a, a rendering when, uh, but I would, I would love to see the rendering that they gave us when mm -hmm. we approved it. That would be interesting to see mm -hmm. what it looks like. Uh, you can actually find it online. Do, do you yeah. know, I have this to answer, do we have yeah. some, anything? Yeah, so the, um, our, the, our contact with Station 2D was actually in this week or late last week dropping off um, some forms and I did ask him what the plan was mm -hmm. for painting that wall in terms of timing um, and he did tell me that they were trying to work with the crew um, to get someone out there. However, he did not provide a, a specific time frame for that work to be done. So I will follow up again though and get some more information on that. Did he provide a color? Uh, I believe it is noted, yes. I just don't remember off the top oh, of my okay. head. Yep. I'm sure it's going to happen soon. The weather's getting better for us. It has to be. Better. Yeah, it is getting a little bit better. Yeah. 
Yep. So I will follow back and I'll plan on hopefully having an update at the uh, the next meeting, the April 23rd meeting. So when you can you add to that update for me? That I'd love to see, as Paula yeah. had suggested, the mm -hmm. rendering of what the wall was supposed to look like when mm -hmm. it was presented mm -hmm. to me. Interestingly yeah. enough, in my travels recently, because the wall has been a point of discussion, I have mm -hmm. spotted another one of those walls. It's obviously a preformed type of form mm -hmm. used to make that wall. I spotted one, but the one I spotted was similar in height and identical in appearance, had a cap on it with a bow nose. Hmm. I, it looked much better. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Did you take a picture of it? I, I, I was moving pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, towing a trailer. Yeah, so uh, just uh, I'd be interested to know what our drawing looked like. I don't yep. have the plans anymore. Yep, I will yeah. take a look and yeah. provide an update. Yeah. Good. I have been in discussions with them just to put it out on the table that they need to make sure their dumpsters are emptied frequently. There's been a lot of garbage that's been on my property line. Um, that was actually brought up during a meeting. I have uh, plastic in my trees. Um, so they have gone through and they, they've taken it out, but I really have to go over there and I'd like to have them be more regulated that once a week they walk it and clean it. And, um, because it, it is north and I've always had a lot of wind coming across that field. I mean, it's not against them. It's a lot of stuff that, you know, we've had a lot of wind and it's coming across that. So I have discussed with them that, you know, we don't want to have the town, the center of town, get the impression that myself and 280 are having our garbage end up in the center of town. Yeah. Yeah. So I have asked them to kind of police it a little bit more, but I would it's like a, a little... Building official. Yes, our building back. official has been in touch, and um, every time they've been pretty prompt in sending a crew out there to, yeah. to police the back, especially back along Hung Hungary Road. So you've contacted them? Yes. I mean, I've not contacted yes. you about it. I just want to make that yep, no, clear we're, to them. Yes, our I've, building official has been in touch with I've them. I've tried to be a very good neighbor to them. <laughs> I haven't been complaining. Um, but I want, I hope that they're going to be a good neighbor to me mm -hmm. long term. Um, the other thing is, is there's a dog park, and I was just wondering when they're going to have that done. Because there's a number of dogs that are walking. It's great to see, yeah. I have to tell you, I, I think without the takes is we're just yeah. specifically yeah. for the sign. I, just want to throw that out. I would strongly encourage you just to, you can, you, I'm sure you've done it before, contact uh, Abby's Office of Community Development, and she can go through the, the site plan and, and give you some. Oh, no, I, yeah, I understand that. I just didn't know, because there's a lot of people walking their dogs, and, um, you know, down in the center of town, which is really great, but it'd be nice if that dog park was done maybe a little sooner. So. I just, you know, she can go through that, because Brooke said the that's it. Thank you so much. Anyone on Zoom about the application? Don't see anybody? Any uh, other commissioner comments? Nope. Any other comments from the applicant? No. Okay. okay. If there's no other comments, Abby, staff perspective? Yep. Okay. All right. If there's no other comments, they're going to close the public hearing. Uh, the commission has 65 days to come with a decision. Uh, we may talk about it later agenda. Thank you very much. Okay, continuing on the uh, agenda, we have item number C, application seeking a zone change from center edge to commercial center for property on Sandbrook Street. Uh, Vice Chair Myers can read the call to the hearing. There will be a public hearing conducted by the B and Z on Tuesday, March 26, 2024 at 7 p.m. in the Granby Town Hall meeting room, 15 North Granby Road, to hear and consider the following item. Application seeking a zone change from center edge to commercial center for properties located at 254 and 256 Salmon Brook Street, filed at Z-2-24. At the hearing, interested persons may appear and written communications will be received. Copies of the proposals are on file in the Community Development Office. Is there an applicant or a representative here? Good evening. My name is John Piguero. I reside at 19 Day Street South and um, also the current owner of 254-256 Salmonbrook Street. And again, I'm here to ask the committee to consider zone change, taking the property from uh, Center Edge to Commercial Center. And um, my proposal includes a comprehensive interior and exterior uh, improvements to all three structures, which I'm, I'll show you in the PowerPoint if you have that up. Um, the zone change would basically allow me to pursue a mixed use 
um, with the resi residential character of the house uh, remaining intact, the print shop uh, transitioning to a commercial use, and the three-car garage serving as an office and residential space. Next slide. So uh, before I get started, I just wanted to kind of lay out and give everybody an aerial view of the property um, in relationship to where it's located on Salmonburg Street and Hartford Ave. It has frontage on both streets. It's got about 200 feet of frontage on Hartford Ave. And um, under the current use today, I could do a handful of things. So I could keep it at, as a single family dwelling. Um, I could have a home occupation if I lived in the house. Um, I could essentially knock the house down and plant corn because it's got an agriculture use as well, which I have no intention to do that. Um, I could put up a government building, have a attached accessory apartment, um, but I'd also need to live there as well. Um, and then a family, child, or group home, uh, which would be located in the residence. So um, under special permit today, uh, I could have a professional office, financial services, which I believe relates to a bank, and also a church, daycare, uh, bed and breakfast. Again, I think I'd have to reside in the home itself. Um, I'm asking to change the zone to, again, commercial center, which would allow me to do, have a broader use. So I could do retail, service, um, multifamily, restaurants, or office space. Um, one thing to know, everything under both special permit is I would have to actually get approved to do anything still, so um, that's all regulated. Can you go to the next slide, please? And um, here I just wanted to show you an aerial view of each zone. Um, orange here represents commercial edge zone, blue center commons, and tan is commercial center. Next slide. Um, this shows the house as it is today for the, the first floor um, print. Uh, again, my plan consists of dividing the house into three apartments, um, each having two bedrooms, all being affordable rents, averaging around $1,200 a month to rent these units. Um, I currently own a similar property across the street from Geisler's. It's a three-unit building. Average rents are $1,200. So I have experience doing it. I've had um, 20 years plus experience in the construction and real estate development um, area. I've done a lot in the town itself. Um, so if you move to the next slide. So this is just color coded showing each unit. Um, yellow obviously being apartment one, light blue apartment two, and uh, I'd call that purple I guess apartment three. So um, each unit would have roughly about 1,200 square feet. Uh, unit one and two have two means of egress on the first floor, and um, all units will have updated kitchens, baths, um, HVAC, electrical, and plumbing. Next slide. Um, this is the second floor layout as it exists today. Um, next slide will show you that there are minor, uh, basically, construction improvements to separate the units. We just need a firewall um, between each unit, and then again, update all electrical plumbing and a kitchenette to unit three, which would be upstairs. Actually, unit one um, shares the upstairs and the downstairs. So unit one's bedrooms are two upstairs. Next slide. So this is um, the garage. So my plan for the garage is I'm currently in conversations with a speech and language business, which um, my wife owns and operates. She currently rents space in town, and she's looking for more easable access. She needs first floor access for her clients. And I propose to do office space on the first floor here, and on the second floor, uh, open loft apartment. Next slide. So this is just basically a visual of what the building would look like. I would add additional um, windows to the front of the building and the center door. Next slide. This is just a kind of a rough layout of what the office space would look like. So she's currently a single business owner, doesn't have any employees. Typically, her office visits um, 
it spanned about two hours on site with um, normally two parents and a child. Um, but there is potential for a second office because as she grows the business, I wanted to consider another employee. Next slide. So this is the second floor, basically, of the garage, kind of an open loft concept. And the next slide will show you kind of a rough draft of what I want to do to create an office, I mean, a, a loft apartment on the second floor. Um, the second floor also has an entrance in the rear of the building, separate entrance to get up to the, to the second floor. Next slide. Uh, for the print shop, so, Currently, I'm talking to a Granby resident who um, has an idea to open up a retail food and beverage shop. And um, again, major improvements to the building itself. I want to keep the characteristic of the building intact, but, but obviously I, I have to do some improvements to it. New siding, new shades, um, new windows and doors and um, obviously depending on the use here, I would update the inside uh, HVAC electrical and plumbing as well. There is an existing water line and a sewer that's in the floor. I don't know if it was ever connected with the past, but that's something I'd have to verify with the time. Uh, next slide. This just shows kind of the current layout today. And then the next slide. Um, here we were asked to do a preliminary parking plan based on each use for each building, um, which is shown here, 18 parking spots. Again, this is just a preliminary plan. We're very open and flexible to any other design. I think, in fact, the town would prefer that we connect to the rear property, which is um, a commercial parking lot for, well, where the Granby Pharmacy used to be, which is an antique shop today, and um, the nail salon. Uh, this is just a layout of what the aerial parking would look like, um, just kind of park style. So again, 18 spots, um, spots for on the right-hand side next to the garage for my office, for my wife's office, and then in the center between the print shop and the house, you would have 11 spaces there, and then two spaces to the left. This is just a visible, uh, visible representation of um, what the parking would look like and feel like. Um, my goal here is to create a mixed-use property to attract more people to Granby Center, more people who can afford to actually live in Granby Center and um, you know, not be able to afford some of the higher rents in other areas, but um, have the ability to walk and shop at the local businesses. Um, then the next couple of slides just um, talk about some of the other properties surrounding and um, more southwest and north uh, along Salmon Brook Street. So 255 Salmon Brook Street, which is directly across the street from my property, um, here the zoning is Center Commons. It's in the historic overlay district. This house is known as the Old Gaines Hotel listed on the Granby Historical website, um, currently used today as a three-unit apartment building. And actually behind this is a child care center. Next slide. Uh, this is 261 Sandra Brook Street, again, in the historic overlay district, listed on the Granby Historical website, uh, known as the Loomis House, used in the past as an inn, as a tea house, and um, I believe medical services as well. Today I believe it's being occupied as office space, however, I, I, I think it's vacant, I'm not sure. Next slide. Uh, this is 4 East Granby Road, known as the Gracie House, again, on the Historical Society website, again, uh, Center Commons, uh, being used today as law offices. Uh, this is Two Park Place. Um, I believe in the past this was the old Granby Hotel, historic building. Today the use is retail, uh, service, and office. And this is uh, this falls within uh, center commercial. Uh, next slide. 
So this property uh, abuts my property. It's in the rear of me. It's 911 Hartford Ave, directly, um, again, behind my house. Again, home of the old Grammy Pharmacy. Today, antique shop and the nail salon. And I believe the bank is also part of this property as well. Um, further southwest is the Congregational Church, um, which is a church, and they also have a church hall as well, uh, commercial ed zone, historical in the district. And then further down the road, heading towards Salmonburg Park, um, on the corner of Salmonburg Street and Pendleton Road. You have old uh, Dr. Pendleton's hospital here, which is a five plus unit apartment building. <coughs> again, in the historical district, again, in the commercial edge zone. And then finally, uh, you have 208 Salmonbrook Street, which is the home of Grandy Historical Society, um, like mine in the historic overlay district, like mine in the commercial edge district. I believe they operate here as a, a museum showcasing historical artifacts and homes. They also have a research library and they operate a retail gift shop on site. So with that, does anyone have any questions I can help you? Uh, this, just to clarify, um, the commission knows about this for us, we are not here discussing the use or the parking or the applicant is showing that as a reason why he is proposing his own change, correct, Abby? Right. So we're not here discussing any of the aspects of if we like this or if the parking's right or wrong or, or that. It's specifically on the zone change and the applicant uh, is showing that of why he wants the zone change so he could ask for those things under a special permit in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I'll, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of questions from the commission. Um, where do you like to go? So mm -hmm. before you go, Paul, uh, yeah. is there anything from a staff perspective? Yeah. The signs have been up. Um, yes, signs were posted. We received confirmation that all the abutters received notification. Uh, the public hearing notice was noted March 26th. However, the applicant did request that the public hearing be postponed. Um, so that's why there is the difference in the date there. And then also for the record, we have correspondence from uh, different residents and including the Sandbrook Historical Society is notified and they provided a uh, detailed response and packet that was included. Yes, and thank you for reminding me too because we did receive one letter about this application that came in today. So it wasn't posted online as part of the meeting packet, but the so commission did get it as did the applicant. Okay. Thank you. So I'm sorry, Paula, I interrupted you. So clarify for me, um, in the Center Commons, the Brignall properties, they are rentals without a homeowner. Now, is that because it's pre-existing or is that able to be done in, in that zone? So in the Center Commons zone, I went and wrote out a whole bunch of notes. But yeah, so um, by special permit, uh, business or professional offices are allowed. Yeah. Um, again, special permit. Yeah. Um, I don't know off the top of my head when approvals were sought for that property. Mm -hmm. um, it was before I was oh, here. It's, yes. been, it's been a long time. Those have been rentals. And I do believe there might also be a residential unit um, in that building as yeah. well, an yeah. apartment. Because it seems to me one of the things you're looking for is the, the ability of, of having um, rentals without ownership being there. And I'm wondering if if it was allowed in the center of common zone, if that would has less um, special permit options that might be more, make people more uncomfortable on that corner. In other words, would that be a better way to have gone? So in the center common zone, multifamily is a permitted use. Mm -hmm. um, however, the property needs at least five acres or more. Okay, well, those, not, those don't have five acres right. on those other and properties. So it must have been pre-existing. Okay. That answers my question. Eric? No, nothing now. No. Thank you. Nothing at the moment. Nothing. The, the single family house that uh, 
think immediately next year. Is that multifamily or is it a single family? The one to the right of the property, if you're facing it from St. Edward Street? So, we'll south, we'll say south of you. South yeah, of you. south of you. 252. I is believe that the it. Across the way? No, it's directly abutting you to the south. The one that doesn't look as happy as it's a single family. No, that's a single family. To the right. If I was to eat the one across the street, you said is three, three apartments. Uh, the one across the street, the one is 255 Samuel Lake Street. And is that, yeah, is that um, whether you know or staff knows, is that? All rentals, or does the owner live there? That is all rentals. So that's all rentals. Yes. Okay. And is the Dr. Pendleton property all rentals as well? Correct. Yes. So there are properties that are. Okay. There's no other immediate questions. I will. Uh, if you have anything else, we're going to let the public. Okay, we'll have you come back. Okay. So um, I know there's some members of the public here. Um, like to come up and speak on this application, please come forward. I'm John Morgan. I live at 221 Salmon Brook Street, with the house with the daffodils in the front at the moment. <laughs> uh, I think you all have a letter that I wrote, and so I'm not going to read that again. But I read over it, and I really didn't emphasize, I don't think, enough the fact that you're not only the Zoning Commission, but also the Planning Commission. And one of the things under planning is planning the transportation routes in the town. If you had to pick a site that had a less auspicious access than this site does, you would be hard pressed to find it. The traffic stacks up across on Salmon Brook Street, even with the new improvements, it now stacks two lanes wide instead of one. Entering and especially exiting would be very difficult. The traffic sweeping around, uh, heading down uh, Hartford Avenue there, uh, that access on that side traffic is coming around now at a much increased rate due to the new improvements. And the traffic lanes are condensing at that point, so the traffic is trying to get a line while somebody tries to pull out and go left. Right is bad enough, but left would be <coughs> an entirely different kind of operation. <coughs> so I think that's an important consideration for this site. A minute ago, there was talk about rentals on uh, Salmon Brook Street. I've lived in that house for 50 years. All those places that you mentioned have been rentals before I arrived. That's, that's the same. Uh, there that's hasn't been a new rental property inserted on the street in a long time. As a, just a kind of a thought, you wonder if in fact the solution to Abby's comment about improving housing opportunities in Granby, if you're gonna do it there, and maybe it should be for the whole town, that uh, perhaps something should be developed, I'm not quite sure how it would fit together, allowing multiple owner-occupied units within houses that exist in the year 2020. It would give the opportunity to have additional units without disturbing necessarily the built environment which, once it's gone, it is gone. That's John, explain that again. I didn't quite understand where you were going. Maybe I couldn't hear you because you're talking softly. The, uh, that perhaps the solution to improving housing opportunities is to, within that area, and perhaps maybe in the whole town, but within that area, which seems to be the subject of discussion, would be to provide multiple owner-occupied units within any house that exists as of 2020 or some other day. In other words, all of those houses there could in fact have more than a single occupant. Mm -hmm. But that would be a separate process yeah, that you have to get into. Down the road. Thank you. 
interesting idea. Okay. Kate Bogley, 198R Salmon Brook Street. Sorry, let's just. Um, I'd like to speak in favor of the zone change. Um, I think the market has spoken about this property and that the highest and best use is as a commercial venture. The house was on the market for over a year and no family wanted to buy it. And this in a very competitive real estate market. Um, it's very likely too close now to the much bigger road to be for a traditional you know, family to want to live there. Creating smaller apartments still keeps it residential, but likely allows for a stronger business plan that's able to keep up with the maintenance costs of a house like that. Um, if you could take a look at your map, I thought the map, uh, it was up there, but the map was very compelling, actually the most compelling thing when I um, opened up the meeting packet for today. Um, you can see that all of the properties in the center, actually, that are along 189 are commercial center properties, except for this one. So it actually looks out of place in the zone that it is now. Um, the only reason it probably was, I would imagine, excluded from the commercial center was because probably at the time there was a family living there. But at this point, I don't think it makes as much sense. So I do hope you'll approve the change. Thank you for, my, for your time. Thank you. Hi, thank you for this opportunity. I'm Kara Marshall. I live at 45 Bushy Hill Road in Granby. Um, and I also want to speak in favor of this. I'm very excited by this proposal. I think this is the kind of development that Granby needs. It's a very important location, being right in um, the center of town and right across from the green. So whatever we do with that property will continue to set the tone for what the how the center develops. Um, and I really think it needs life. So I was really excited by the prospect of perhaps having a cafe there. Um, but I also feel that historic preservation is very important. Some of you may recognize that 45 Bushy Hill Road is on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, I care a lot about historic preservation. I drive around and look at old houses and have strong opinions of what's been done, well done and what hasn't. Um, one, yes, yes. <laughs> one continued uh, theme I've seen is um, uh, how parking is treated with some historic homes. Um, so just driving around, um, you may have seen 476 and 480 College Highway in Southwick. It's a very bad example. You've got a couple of very attractive old houses that have just had their lots completely paved over. Um, I think 750 Hop Meadow Street in Simsbury is a really an exam good example of how it's been done. You have I, answer, I am horrible with address numbers, so right. can you tell me like the place because... Okay. Um, so I couldn't even tell you the address for like here someday. So. Um, yeah. Sorry, I was trying to get a PowerPoint together with yeah. some screenshots and didn't, didn't get it done in time. Um, so 476, 480 College Highway, that's on Southwick. Um, 476 is the Red Colonial that is now a um, furniture store. So it's that's on, on the, the corner of 57 there. Yeah. 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 And then the other one next to it is like a law office and okay. yeah, it's just a lot of parking right around it. Thank you. Um, 750 Hot Meadow Street is like the coffee spot, I think, yes. is right yes. on Hot Meadow. Yeah. Um, I think that one is really well done. You've got a coffee shop that preserves the historic home and then around back you have an extensive retail development with parking there. So you have a long Hot Meadow Street the historic um, streetscape and no curb cuts, but the parking and the commercial activity happens around the back. Um, uh, so I think as you consider how this is developed, um, preserving that historic streetscape, preserving the historic fabric um, is very important. Uh, and I think this could be a great way, um, as proposed, to have uh, preserving the home, keeping it in economic use, 
um, encouraging walkability and vibrancy in the center. Um, and I also think it's a really good thing to encourage uh, conversions to small multifamily properties in the center. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, oh, Bill's got you. <laughs> Hello there. Hi, Bill. Um, Bill Ross, 239 Salmonbrook Street. And um, so, you know, I have not, I'm not against apartments. I walk my dog every day, twice a day, about three miles all around town. I see what the apartments look like. I don't know how many of you have walked in town, but they look like dumps. I hate to say it. Maybe John's wouldn't. I don't know. But um, they're not kept up. One of the apartments on um, right across from the green, they still have their, their candy cane from Christmas. It's April. Right? So, um, <laughs> you guys want it? Yes, we I'm sorry. Anyway, so, um, I'm not, you know, I, I submitted a packet that had a, a parking in there. That's a little bit exaggerated, but there's still 18 cars. And as John mentioned, coming in and out, turning left on Hartford Avenue, uh, you know, I guess you'll deal with that once it's approved or not approved. Um, John mentioned, this John here, mentioned uh, affordable apartments. Um, I'm not sure what for it was. I, we own our house at 239 Sandwich Street. I have no idea what the rents are in the Grand or the other apartments by Stop and Shop or the new apartments. But $1,200 seems pretty, pretty reasonable to me. But do we really need more apartments in Granby? I mean, we've got 235 on North on um, San Luis Street. The Grand has about 50 or so. That's almost 300. So we have we've added 350 apartments in Granby in the last five years. It just seems like a, a lot of apartments. Um, I wish there was a better um, use of that. I wish somebody had bought that house. It's in the historic district. What's to keep somebody from buying the house across the street, not the apartment, but the Avery house at some point in time? Or the house, just one house south? Um, and then people who buy it, they come before the commission, they want to put two apartments there because nobody else bought the house. So <coughs> we've got this iconic historic district from the historic siding up to um, the green. That, um, you know, I, I've been in my front yard working and I've seen <coughs> People will actually come park at the church and walk up and down our street because the houses look so nice. Um, I'm not sure that's the case um, if they start turning to apartments. Um, there must be a more creative way to deal with historic structures. Um, the, um, the, cent the center study committee is looking at uh, uh, turning the historic part of Granby into a, a local historic district. If that happens, there's grants and there's different ways to get funding to repair and, and upgrade um, to those Capex houses. And it seems like in Granby, in the center of town, the, the, um, the absentee landlords, it seems, don't really care for much of their place. Um, have, has anybody <coughs> been inside the Pendleton Apartments? Okay. He cut his grass once last year. Once. So. <clears throat> That's all I've got to say. Thanks. <clears throat> I'm Peggy LaRoe, 17 Reed Hill Road. <clears throat> Used to live in the center. Um, I just want to the comments that were made by the woman who talked about creative use of historic properties and the fact that that was like the only house in Hartford Ave that isn't, I guess you'd say, I can't remember, Center Edge or Center Commercial. But um, I think that that really highlights the thing because this is a neighborhood. This stretch <coughs> going down Santa Brook Street, the historic area, is different. And I like it. John Morgan's points. I like his um, per the string of pearls analogy, and it works for me. I've always thought it as creeping zone change. Once you take that step, it's done. Um, I'm disappointed that this is being given serious consideration before the center committee does its thing. Um, 
sometimes I feel like what happens when people make applications here is that the applicant has good intentions and is very creative and has come up with an idea. But it's very easy for the commission to feel like they've got to help the guy. He's got a piece of property, he is constrained by how to do it. I like it in the terms of what I know you all know, which is the best interest of the town. And to me, even though I'm sensitive and compassionate, I don't think he should feel the need to rescue a property owner when there's problems doing what he might have liked to do. I sort of think of this property as wishing maybe it could be two different things there, two different zones. And uh, the location is horrible the, uh, in terms of traffic, traffic in and out. But um, I just feel like we're giving things away and we should be careful not to give them away. That's all. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. Anyone else? Mom, Ken, or oh, Ken Donald. Mm -hmm. The other Zoom person? No, I just got my okay. um, Ken Cool, 80 Silky Road. Um, I guess I'm partially here just to testify to John's character. I've known him for 20 years. Uh, he's moved his family here because of our great school system. Uh, he's been a builder in town, a developer. He's built houses on Clements Spring, several on Silver Street, two on Cider Mill Heights, one on Pratt Farm Lane. Currently built a beautiful house for himself on Day Street South. He's what Granby really wants. He has a heart for Granby. He loves the idea of restoring and saving this building. That's what his intention is. Um, recently, because construction costs are high, um, he's been doing more renovations, including the, the uh, refugee house across from Geisler's. Uh, it's, it's one that he owns. He also owns, with Brian Gorko, the uh, old mobile station and that group of buildings up there on, uh, in North Granby Center. When he bought the property from the Dunn family, people said it was known as the Shattuck House. So actually, Aaron Draper Shattuck's heirs owned this house after he passed away. Um, it is a significant house. And what John wants to do is restore it and repurpose it so it'll stay a beautiful historic building. Um, he is willing to become a part of the historic, the town historic district if they approve that and that would put all kinds of restrictions on what he can do to the place. But he's planning on doing just what he said he's going to do and keeping it. He's going to put so much money into those renovations he showed you. He's not going to be able to flip it. He's not going to want to sell it because it had so much in it. No one's going to want to buy it if he's got too much into it. So all of these renovations he's talking about doing are really an investment in Granby Center. And I've been in real estate almost 50 years. I started in 1975. Uh, Gerald Ford was president when I got my real estate license. Um, the principle of real estate is highest and best use. The purpose of planning is to really look forward and what is the best thing looking forward for the, for the community. Uh, many of the houses that were listed um, the Dwyer, Dr. Dwyer's house, which is Brignall's property now. Brignall now owns that whole section there, that house, the two rentals. He owns that whole block. None of those are owned by families anymore. There are basically no homes left in the center of town that are owned by families that are on either Hartford Avenue or uh, East Granby Road or from Brignall's place north. So. Old buildings just are not attractive, I can tell you from the real estate business. You're not going to get a young family to buy the Shattuck house there. It's got lead paint, it's got steam heat, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not a family house. And yes, it's a busy corner, but to ask them to, to live there, a family to live there with kids on two state highways, 
It's not going to happen. So some reuse, some repurposing of that lot is going to happen. One use that John did point out is that it does uh, an allowable use in the center edge zone is um, elderly housing. Congregate housing is something that he doesn't need a zone change for. But that's going to mean removing the buildings that are there, a lot of parking, a lot of new construction. And you know, is that something that we would rather see there uh, rather than the very limited use that he's planning to do to it? Um, a lot of what I was planning on saying has been already covered. So let me just. I guess the last thing, really, just to sum it up, is that um, we're really talking about looking at the past, present, and future. So the past is the history of the house and how it's been used. The present is the current conditions that owning property in Grand Villas. There's a, uh, an overabundance of retail and commercial space. There's a total lack of housing. There's a t even a greater lack of housing that people can afford. And so, and looking forward, he's willing to join the historic district to, to put all those properties on it and preserve it. So it seems like a wonderful opportunity for you to approve basically that that property will be there for the indefinite future if you allow him to do this very minimal. It requires a zone change basically because we don't allow two and three family homes in Granby. So, a two-family home is, is, is an apartment building, or it's multifamily. There's no place in Granby where it's just outright allowed except for commercial. So it isn't something. All of these buildings that, yes, are poorly maintained have been there for a long time and have, you know, and they, and they keep flipping them. Um, John's not that kind of guy. I mean, if you can talk to the building official, you know he does really good work. His, his word is his bond. I've been working with him for years. I can do business with him on a handshake. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. So I'd like you to approve his application. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. <coughs> My name is Tom Dibbert. I live at 102 Hungary Road in Granby. I just have a couple thoughts. Um, one thing I, I like to ask you, so I have a clarification on the zone, what the center zone is, and the purpose of it. Because I understand that the Ladadi Oval Office and Brignoles can be used for pre professional offices. Is that correct? And not apartments. Yes, uh, so those are the center common zone, so they can be used. And that can apply to the same houses down San Brook Street? Um, so I'm sorry, so center commons is uh, business or professional office by special permit. Oh, by special um, permit. And multifamily, you need more than five acres. Right, so in order to have a business, you need a special permit? Mm hmm in the center commons, yeah. My question is, if your wife wants to have your office, could she have the office in the Shattuck house? instead of the garage. And then you're going to review the house, keep it in a historic district. I'm sorry. So there's three there's three center zones. Right. So the property that's being requested is in a different zone than the Brignall property and the law offices. So it's a totally different zone. It's a different zone, okay. There's three zones in the center of town, three center zones. And it's pre pre zoning those apartments were before zoning because the, it's the ones on the Brignall side. Yes. yes. They were there before zoning. Okay. Uh, would there be a possibility of having Hartford Avenue, that section of the property, be commercial? So you could do that side there and have the same group remain residential in the family that way. Could it be a split zone in that property? Is that a possibility? I don't know. The, 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 the zone lines can, you can have. They don't have to follow the lot line of a property. Okay. That answers your question. They can split. So I'm a member of the historic society, and I'd love to see, as John Morgan pointed out, it's a nice row of houses down Brook Street, and we'd like to see that continue. 
And we like to see that as the historic district, as you have in Suffield, as you have in Wethersfield. I think you should have this, had it in this town as well. And I think it should remain, and certainly, as Ken said, the Shack House is very historic. There's a lot of history in that. And I think an office, it could be used for an office, too, as the other apartments are and so forth. Uh, and the, as a developer, as a developer, I assume as a developer buying houses, is looking to make money, because that's their business. The, uh, as you mentioned, the San Rick Historic Society has retail, we sell history books and so forth. We're not in business of making money, we're a non-profit organization. And we're here to teach and educate people the history of this town. So I just thank you for, I just hope you realize once you move step forward and it becomes a commercial, we don't know what the changes will become down the street. If you allow him, somebody else down the street, and you say, hey, you allowed that person to have it 20 years ago, and I like to have my shot at I like to keep Sam Brook have a historic district all the way down there. And I think it's, we've got to keep the character of our town with us. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I'll check before you if anyone on Zoom would like to uh, speak on this application. I would. Just introduce yourself and address, please. Um, Ellen Thompson. I will try and care. Let's see if I can do my video. Um, yes. Um, I live at 250 Sandenberg Street. I live two houses down from the property that's being discussed. Um, I have mixed feelings about the proposal. I support affordable apartments. I think we need more of them in Granby. And I actually am a little bit more reassured hearing that um, the owner owns the what had been the refugee house because um, that's a nice property. Um, the other apartments, um, the Brignol apartments, are so poorly taken care of. Um, it's, it's frightening to think of that happening to this property. I'm also concerned about it becoming commercial because I don't know if that also allows for like bigger, more neon, more commercial signs. Um, although I'm on Savinbrook Street, my backyard goes up to the back of the parking lots off Hartford Avenue, and there's now so much neon light at night that the house I moved into um, a bunch of years ago is, is does not feel like the same thing anymore. Um, so I I personally think that our zoning laws regulations should be changed. I think it's a crime that you have to have five acres to be able to have apartments um, or you know more than one person living in a house, particularly in the center of town. Um, but I'm just it, it concerned about the commercial and, and what that might open up for the property. Um, so thank you. Thank you. See Anna's hands raised. I'm at 15 Old Orchard Road in West Granby. Um, I'm also on the Development Commission in town. Um, I'm not speaking on behalf of the Development Commission tonight, um, although um, the Commission is in favour of a zone change to um, support like commercial use. Um, but I'm speaking as, as a resident uh, tonight. So, we have some beautiful old homes um, down Sandbrook Street, and I, I love the way they look. Um, love driving up and down there, or walking up and down there. Now we have the sidewalks too, and I'm excited at the thought of, of this house being restored and looking beautiful and having life in it. These old homes, although they are so lovely to look at. Um, they don't offer the kind of living accommodation that families want anymore. 
Um, there's very little demand for them. So I think um, turning it into apartments, it, it's a great use for it. It uh, fulfills a need that we have. Um, we have a lot of luxury apartments in town, but we do not have enough small, affordable apartments. Uh, and and this, will, this will help that. Um, and having a, a coffee shop in the old print shop, I think that's a great idea. Um, we could do with more businesses in town. So um, I'm, I'm in favor of this change. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Anyone else on Zoom? Anyone else in the room? If not, like uh, the applicant can come back forward. Like the comment on any of the. Sure. Yeah. Um, again, John Pinguero, 19 D Street South. Um, I guess in regards to um, absentee ownership, um, that is not me. Um, I'm a hands-on individual. My wife will be on premises, hopefully. Um, there's a honey-do list at home. There's going to be a honey-do list here as well. Um, as Ken mentioned, I definitely am willing to be part of the Granby Historical Society. I know there's some conversations about how to organize ways to enforce and preserve the property on the exterior. I'm 100% supportive of that. I love what the um, Historical Society does, and um, I support it fully. My intention here, again, is is to um, keep the characteristics of the house intact and um, the, to keep the ambience of Granby Center intact as well. So, I had a question for you. So, one yeah. of the uh, Todd had brought up if the Sam and Brook side of your property, say the front porch or front sidewalk, was the zone line was drawn there instead of the lot line to keep it in a different, more restrictive zone for the street front. Would that be something you'd be interested in? Just throwing it as an idea. Yes, yes. It was an interesting yes. concept yeah. you brought up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know there's been some talk too along the right-hand side of the property to present, prevent like further development um, of connecting the existing property somewhere. So. Um, I did meet with the Economic Committee, we met with the Historical Society, and we've tried to take recommendations and build it into this proposal. Um, I have a couple of comments. Brian Neno, Ted Lanzarang, here to speak on behalf of the applicant. Um, someone brought up the affordable housing, or affordable rentals, and John said he's going to charge $1,200 a month per unit and they brought up the grant. And the grant costs $1,900 a month for 760 square foot, one bedroom, and up to $3,400 a month for a three bedroom. The single family homes behind the grant, built on slab, all electric utilities, some of them 2,300 feet, go for $5,400 a month. Jeez. So affordable renting and <clears throat> That's what he's looking at. Um, another question was traffic and safety. Right now there are three curb cuts. The state couldn't take them away because they're existing. They redid the roads. <clears throat> but if we bring a site plan in to redo it, we will redo the traffic patterns and get rid of at least one of the entrances and hopefully make a deal with the neighbor behind us and use that for access also. I believe the town <clears throat> just approved or is approving or seeing an application for the same thing behind the barn and grassroots. So that is something that people have been discussing in the center of town, what landowners discuss. So that is, you know, a safety issue for traffic and things like that. So that is something that the applicant would move forward to. And we've also heard about <clears throat> the development commission and how something might be coming down the line. But he can't wait forever to do something with the property. Because if it just sits there and he doesn't repair it and fix it, it starts just to point, it's when you said development commission, do you mean the center study commission? Yes, yes. All right, I didn't want to put words in your mouth. Is that what you meant? Yes, okay. yes. 
And yes, we heard about that before, and yes, they, they might be coming down the line with something, but it could be a year, it could be two years, or maybe it could be six months, but no one knows. So that's why the zone change is important. Don't sit down yet, John. <laughs> um, we've been open for commission questions. Uh, what? Question for the applicant. Could you explain when you say that you're open to enrolling into the Historical Society, what does that mean exactly? Could you clarify yes, that? Yes, so there was a conversation when I met with the Historical Society that they were um, in discussions with ways to preserve the property along Sandy Brook Street, meaning what you can do to the exterior of the building. Um, meaning, a good example would be, okay, it's currently, it's clapboard siding today, I can't just go up and throw, you know, vinyl siding on a structure that has um, detailed cornices and corners, and I'd have to use, like, material to replace and repair, um, which is my intention anyway. And by joining, if you did join the society, would that prevent you from just throwing your throwing your hands in the air and just tearing the whole place down? That I, I don't know. I, I can't speak. But again, that that's not my intention at all. I don't plan to invest and improve the property only to knock it down. Yeah. If I can just clarify, when it comes to joining the historical society, I, I believe the reference is there has been some discussion or some interest expressed about forming a local historic district, um, which would have a commission, um, and they would adopt regulations where any exterior changes would have to go to them for review and approval. Um, there would have to be a vote by, you know, members within the proposed district to establish that district. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what the what the comment is about. Okay. Like Thank you. Owners Association comment. And that is something just to clarify. So that starts with the board of selectmen, and there's been no further discussions about that. I think the idea was merely brought up by members of the Salmon Brook uh, Historical Society, and they presented to the Granby Center group about it. Um, No questions about the application. I'm just thinking about it. I don't know. I don't know. I'll ask a question. Sure. This is a zone change, right? It's not. What would be your suggestions? You know, and again, when I say this, it's not on you. It's when we make a zone change. We can't predicate the zone change based on what John said. He's going to do this. He's going to. You could get the zone change and sell it the day after. Right? What's your? Uh, if you looked at the regs, you know, I have about what protects that property. If we did change the zone, we have one property that's in the historic district in the commercial center, correct? Two Park Place. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we have one existing property. So we do have a historical district. Have you thought about that? For we've heard concerns about protecting the historical nature if it goes commercial center? Um, well, I guess, can you re-ask the question? I mean, but what's, what would be the answer to how do you keep this historic if we change the zone? What, what gives protections to that property? I mean, currently, I don't believe anything's in, in place to protect it. Um, we have the historical, so there's an historical overlay in regulations today, which is right for recommendation. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Recommendations. Uh, I, mean, I mean, for me, but I mean, I, I wouldn't plan on putting this much back in improvements into the house, not wanting to restore and protect the house. Um, that's just my word and, and um, my plan. Um, but to your point, like I, I believe today, if I wanted to, to Ken's point, could knock the house down and all the structures and repurpose it for elderly housing and put it back on the market. That's not my plan. Um, if it was, I would have done it the day after I bought it. So I want to make a comment relative to, to the chair's question, because um, I think there's some confusion about what I'm hearing, at least from my perspective here. And at the end, I look to you to clarify. You prepare a great package. Moving this particular property, we just have to talk about this one property, 
from the zone it's in now to the proposed zone affords no more or less protection that's already in place today. You artfully stated in here that the center edge and center commercial zone allow for commercial use and not, however, uh, the, that's not the clause I wanted, that the uh, property will continue to, um, the, the property is still protected by the comprehensive Granby Center criteria, including the historic overlay guidelines. The same rules will be in place if the property moves from one zone to the other. It will get no benefit, no further protection or less protection than it has today, including the applicants pointing out that it can't be torn down. Right, so the zoning regulations, so there are three zones within the Granby Center zone. There's the Center Edge, Commercial Center, and Center Commons. Mm -hmm. In addition to those three zones, there's kind of overarching uh, Granby Center zone criteria that applies to all properties within that zone, okay, or within those three zones. At the same time, you have the historic overlay district, which in includes properties that fall across all three zones. That historic district overlay criteria applies regardless of the underlying zone. zone. Correct. Um, and that, again, so the property can move, you know, zoning designations by action of this commission, and that historic overlay criteria still stays in place. And I thank you for that, because what I'm hearing tonight is that I believe there are, there's some thoughts out there that by moving this, some switch happens and something bad can happen. And I don't really think that that is the case. And I want to make sure the commission is clear on that. It will have the exact same protections as it has today. I think, Eric, I think what people, folks are nervous about is maybe the commission. Um, if it, we do grant this and somebody were to come in with a different application, they'd come in for something far more commercial in that area. But they would still have to follow. They still would have to go, yes, yeah, and they also have to go through yeah. special permit, which we hope that the commission would hang in there tough right. and understand yes. that this has just gone from one zone to the other, and it needs to be that transition, that gentle change, mm -hmm. not a rapid change. That's right. Restaurants are permitted use in commercial center. Yeah. Not, not, you don't need a special permit, they're permitted. Yeah. And they're not in center edge. So if somebody came in with an application to demolish the house and put a Kentucky Fried Chicken there, would that be lawful? No, so restaurant limited seating is allowed uh, by by right. And so a, a limited seating restaurant is um, a restaurant, okay, less than a thousand square feet. Uh, seating capacity is 16 or less. Hours are between 6 a.m. and 10.30. No walk-up window and no drive-through. So I guess if you had it a small a KFC, it could do it, yeah. but without a drive-through. And it would no. still, Abby, to Commissioner Meyer's point, it's still in the historic overlay. So if the lot was vacant, it still has to conform to the design criteria? Well, so that's a good question yeah. because they're really, aside from site criteria, like location of parking and whatnot, in terms of new building construction, um, in my opinion, the, and looking at these regulations in detail, there really is no strict design criteria for new construction. It mostly speaks to renovation. Now, with that said, there is language in here that, you know, the applicant, you know, should look to other um, architectural details within uh, the center area when designing their building, but it's not a strict mandate. Um, you know, that's all the shell. Correct. So it doesn't make a piece that could be anywhere in Sandwood Brook Street that applies to that, that statement. Yeah, and just to note, the property square footage is well under a thousand square feet. Um, for the print shop, I believe it's about 700. Yeah, I think when it comes to new, you know, there's language in there about, you know, basic conformity with the surrounding area. So there's, you know, again, some language in there, but nothing specific. Look at our regulations, don't we? Other questions? <coughs> no, no, no. You guys ask good ones. Any other members of the public want to anything to add? Come on up, Peggy. Can 
Meg La Peggy LaRoe, Sam, uh, wait a minute, no, let's make all the dresses, <laughs> Sam Rowe, Reed Hill Road. Um, this last part of the discussion has gotten a little confusing. As I look at the chart that was presented in the packet, permitted and special permit uses, the last maybe 10 things on that list look pretty substantially different to me than what is currently permitted in the center edge zone. And I guess that gets a little more confusing because it doesn't seem to be the focus of any discussion. So I'll just ask you to look at those last 10 things. I mean, there's other constraints. No, I don't think anyone's really going to put a movie theater there with a maximum of 80 seats, but some of those other things are possible. And I have less faith in the special permit process than you do. This commission, past 10 years, is probably, you know, I probably haven't disagreed with all that much, but I remember a time when things have been different and they will get different again. So I think it should be more originally scrutinized what could happen here. Thank you. All right, so I'll play devil, devil's advocate. So let's say in a year. Just Bill, just say your Oh, name. I'm sorry, Bill Ross, 239 Santa Brook Street. Let's say we want to convert our, we have a 3,600 square foot house. My wife and I live there with our dog. We want to convert it to five apartments. I can come before the commission. And what reason would you give me not to do that since you're doing it to this property? What would be the logical reason? You're not in the zone. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would apply for a commercial zone. I'm only two houses down. That, that's what that's what worries me. That's what worries Creep. me. Don't His worry plan looks pretty good. I, I must admit, I, I know I've talked to John before. It looks like a pretty good plan, but it just where it is, it just kind of bugs me. I can just see it happen down down the street. You know, maybe not a year, maybe not five years, but at some point, you know, getting tired of mowing all the grass and. Uh, you know, it's a big house. And you only use so many bathrooms. You know. Bill, was your house once a bed and breakfast? Yes, it was, and we lived there. Yeah. Understood. So I, another I, thing with zoning, um, Airbnbs have become more popular than bed and breakfast. I think you need to look at the zoning and maybe um, allow some people to convert their houses to Airbnbs. Using Airbnbs, people don't live there. It's, it's you know, it's not. There's no yeah. restriction on Airbnbs. You can have an Airbnb in any house there, right, maybe? No, I don't think so. <laughs> well, they're not going to the I don't want to get into it. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. No, just, I'm not going to get into the Airbnb yeah. discussion, but let's just say that uh, you, could, you could Airbnb your house to one family today. To one family? In my opinion. I'm not speaking for the commission today, right. even though I'm on the record. <laughs> <laughs> And Bill, one question, just from the historical society perspective, sure. did you, uh, the applicant said that he did speak to, to you, did you guys meet together? We did, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah and, and you clarified, uh, um, Abby clarified the, the di distinct difference between the local historic district and the historic mm -hmm. society. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's, we'll let the applicant come up one more time and then we'll wrap it up. Brian Dental again from Dental Institute. John. Um, the chairman spoke about. Oh, get off the microphone. Your big chair technician is going crazy. Hurt his ears. You spoke about not doing a zone change on the entire property. And we had discussed that a couple weeks ago, but did not move forward with it. But if that's something the commission would entertain, we could leave the south 30 feet of the property as center edge. And we could leave the 50 feet along Sandon Brook as center edge. And that's something that we're willing to do to move forward. And just to answer John's question about, you know, can he do it? No, that's called spot zoning, you can't do that. No. We're not spot zoning here, we're just extending, extending the zone to where we touch. So. But let me ask you a question. If the property, which is single family, which is immediately next door, not two houses away, but immediately next door, 
comes in front of us the week after we grant your application and says, I now border on the well, they, commercial they, center zone. Why, can't, why are you not letting me be rezoned? That's why we're willing to leave the 30 feet as center edge, but the property to our south still borders mm -hmm. the center, center commercial zone to the rear. They have a commercial closet behind them. This will add them some protection, or it will add some protection to the neighborhood because they think we're going to, you know, keep going south with the center commercial zone, and we're we're willing to stop and not make all of our property center commercial. It will stop in the long standing book, but that doesn't mean the person to the south that lives in a single family home can't come to you and say, "Look, I've got a commercial zone behind me." Like anyone can bring an application. Else? John, anything? Give me the last word. Um, no, thank you. Have we any staff reasons we need to keep the hearing open? No. Commission, are you okay to close the hearing? Okay. At this time, we're going to close the public hearing. The commission has up to 65 days to render its decision. Thank you very much. We appreciate thank everyone's you. input. Okay, next on the agenda is receive applications and scheduled hearings. I see, Abby, you got one for uh, site plan modification? Yes, uh, we have an application seeking a site plan modification to locate a prefabricated shed at 18 Hartford Avenue. This is um, adjacent to the patio that was uh, formerly Four Dads, um, so it's under new ownership, and the folks there uh, would like some additional storage on site. Um, so if the commission is in agreement, that could be scheduled for April 23rd. Um, and I would also just like to note, uh, we made an error with the 371 North Granby Road special permit. It was advertised as 369, as we had to rerun that notice uh, for the outdoor storage there. So there, those two applications would be on the 23rd. By all me. 23rd it is. Okay. Next is consideration of applications. We've concluded the hearing. We've concluded uh, three hearings tonight. Um, my suggestion, unless you want to, is on the woodworking facility in 563 uh, and the zone change we just heard. I'd like to Think about those and digest it before we have our discussion. If anybody wants to start that discussion tonight, I'm, I'm open for it. I kind of think it's a good idea to, just to, to begin our discussion because then we can begin clarifying what's on our mind and then we can go That's home right. and digest. But That's fine. Well, it's really fresh, I think sometimes. Well, if we wanna, we'll start, we'll go over it. We can do uh, the first one, yep. the 563. Go ahead, Paul. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, what I, that's what I get for opening my trap, right? All right, let's see. Back to my notes here. I, I still have, um, I still think a sawmill, what he's, what he's accomplishing there is a small sawmill, and I don't think it belongs in a commercial area. I think all that he's doing with his with his woodworking and all of that, if he can take that log cutter, a big log cutter, and do his work on his big logs off campus and bring them in and pile them, that's fabulous. But I personally just think it's just, it, it doesn't look like the zone. It's not what you see in that zone, and it's not probably what people want to see. I mean, that's kind of where I am. Just so you understand where you are, Paula, are you saying that proposed condition number one would be entirely eliminated? Th that would be where I think you were going in some yeah. of your earlier comments, yeah. and that's where that's I where that's I where I end up. I would yeah. just yeah. eliminate it entirely. Yeah. I don't want to fiddle around with somebody sawing for 40 minutes and for an hour and two minutes and getting a call to the zoning enforcement officer. 
Let's just eliminate it. Okay. That way, we that way it's clear that it is not an industrial zone. Then do we uh, exclude the log storage too? That's a closer call. <coughs> but I mean, to, to tell you the, tell you the truth, when you look at the whole site with all those logs there, yeah. it is the most. It is really industrial looking. Yes, it, it just is, and I I would be in favor of of, of eliminating the log storage too. I yeah. think that another site would be more appropriate. His planks that he's already cut up in that we had it on Simsbury Road. Um, McLean's cut some trees and they were out there cutting their planks and that's perfect. They did it outside and nobody bothered. If he built the big storage shed like he wanted to, to put that sawmill inside and closed, would you agree to that? They'd have to change the regulations. Okay. Um, that's, I mean, I'm not saying no, I'm just saying that. I'm, 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 I'm throwing that's everything, right. you know. That's, um, a, that's a regulation change because I don't see it fitting. I don't, it's not an accessory used to a commercial zone. Gotcha. And I think somebody pointed out, and I don't have my book with me, mm -hmm. that the industrial zone actually says sawmill. It does. So mm -hmm. that okay. even reinforces me that it's not even in the commercial zone yeah. without it being specific. Yeah, no. And it's also the log story. So it's great huge trucks coming in and no, no. That's industrial. That's mm -hmm. not commercial. For the record, I was reading the industrial zone because somebody had made a comment that yeah. it's all milling. It's not. It is lumber, lumber yard. Oh, lumber yard. Yeah. So there's no, there's nothing that says I think, what you, I think there's is. enough gray area in the industrial regulation that we could probably fit it in somewhere. But uh, just for the record, I don't think I spotted sawmill and I looked. Okay. But lumber yard is a prohibited use. No, permitted. Mm -hmm. from permitted. Industrial. Industrial. In, the industrial in the industrial zone, industrial zone. but not in commercial zone. Yeah, I would consider possibly, if you want to really get nitty gritty on accessory use, certainly sawmilling could be an accessory use to a lumber yard. Yeah. So I think I think you get it in the industrial zone. I mean, you look at where small town septic is and the beautiful job he did with his berm and all. I mean, that's where he should be doing something like that. That's that kind of site. Yeah. I guess if it didn't look like it looked. And there was no effort to even uh, again. I, I, you know, I, uh, I think that, but, but then we yeah. do have what you said with the regulation, and, it, and it's actually excluded. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I think the appearance is not as good uh, looking, and it hasn't gotten better since we started this. And normally, I would think it would improve as the process went yeah. out. And the burn the same spring because really that's just his his leftover cuttings. It's not anything that's been. And put up to be beautiful for the neighbors with interesting plantings and all. It's just something that's going to rot over the next few years. No, and I think at that site walk we noticed in the uh, northwestern corner, it seems to be have become a dump site for mm. material that's not being used at all on the property. It's kind of being pushed over the edge. So there's a landscaping issue associated with that berm. Mm -hmm. that, it's just not fair to the neighborhood behind as well that, you know, it seems like the garbage is being disposed in the backyard. Yeah, I thought the berm was a, a pretty serious mistake in the sense that it is completely covered up about 50% of the roots of the largest tree on the property with about 10 feet of material. I don't see how that tree survives long term. but. Owners have a right to cut down anything they want. So, but we're, we're we're dealing with a special permit situation, so we do have some authority to require certain things. So, are we in a position tonight to actually decide what the resolution would look like? I, I'm hearing, and, and I do want to, I think we're going to have to draft up and perhaps ask Abby too. For, I am leaning as well that item one would come out and we wouldn't have any outdoor woodworking. Right? So, so item one, one and two. One and two and no storage. Right? Item three. Yeah. And you have to replace them with a, a statement that it's not permitted use. That's, uh, I think there's that a problem. Problem. section that I have a ruling on any of this is that the property is out of compliance right, right. now. You know, there's, we've been, the applicant's been before us numerous times, the equipment's been out front the entire time. The backyard is you know, multiple log truck loads of material. 
I don't see how we can approve this application with the property being so out of compliance. Mm -hmm. it, it needs to have time to act on it, and it doesn't seem like there's any action being taken. Good point. Mm -hmm. So that's that's you know that's yeah. I, I don't see how we can approve anything. It, it, yeah. In a, in a, in a retail zone like that, do the lines have to be identified in the parking lot? Do spaces have to be? Is that part of? I mean, there's just an application. Well, let me. Yes, they should be. Okay. However, it's not Enforced. uncommon where there might be some issues with striping. Okay. There was an application before this commission not too long ago about that. Mm -hmm. That parking lot, since I, I've been going there, has never been striped. Doesn't mean it should not. It should not have been. But you know, that's something that he's back before us. It's changing the site plan. We can of course require that. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, uh, and I have to go with Commissioner Shane, and we approve all this. What's going to make the, what's the mechanism to get the non-compliance out of there? Is there one, Abby? Um, so yeah, if the special permit is a, is approved and he's not complying with the conditions, he can either you know come back before the commission and the commission can look at revoking, or we move to a cease and desist and work with the town attorney on that. Um, or there is a provision for fining. <coughs> because that's not what we want to do. We'd like to see his woodworking and his business right. succeed. So. It's a very good business. There's yeah, no it's a great it. business. <laughs> yeah, I think it's He's cool come in he numerous does. times that he does the majority of his milling like off-site at a four-acre property. He said it numerous times. It, well, then it seems like he has an oh, option. No, no saw milling on the property and then... No log storage on the property. Yeah, exactly. Those are the two things we don't want him to do. So in order, we talked about, in order to get that to work, Abby, you would need to tweak one, uh, remove one, remove two, uh, the log storage in part three. Mm -hmm. On four, there's also reference to storage materials being eight feet. You'd have to remove the word logs. And then in item under eight, where you'd have to strengthen that up to um, not allow the milling. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, then you made a few staff comments about the site plan needs a little bit of work about the designated area for the trailers that can't be put in parking spaces. Uh, you said there needed to be some clarification of the vermin, some fencing. I'd like to see that done as fast as I can possibly type during a meeting. I can't get all of that in. <laughs> and I'd also like to suggest, you know, it's a good point. We all assume what berm is. Berm to me is not used wood chips. No. Mm -hmm. So I think if we're going to have a berm, it should be specified that it's made of soil with a few wood chips with so, trees uh, yeah. a, a trees a question or, or when grass. I yeah or yeah. grass yeah or, or grass. grass grass is fine too yeah. so would it have to be a berm or how would the commission feel about the option to just extend the stockade yeah. fence i think, I think that'd, that'd be, be, that'd be the, the best fence is fine. Yeah. i think the fence would be best but yeah, yeah. so yeah. long as it's not white plastic <laughs> 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 I mean, the, the, um, the cleanup Abbey's was concerned because, uh, again, I looked at it on my own, but, you know, if, if, you, if those wood pile of wood chips, that's all refuse from the sawmill, I assume. Yeah. Um, he had them brought in. He, he had, he had, had them brought in. Some of them brought for erosion in. control is what he told us. Erosion he, control. He brought that in for erosion control. Yeah, there's awesome. some wet spots on the property. Yeah, it's, I'm not an expert, but that doesn't seem to be the best use for long-term solution. I think we're in consensus on yes. Putting this okay. together. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll continue that discussion at our next meeting on the 23rd. Um, the next one was the sign at 280 Salmon Brook Street uh, outside of the wall discussion. Which thank you, Abby, because I get continued questions from the public yes, about yes, that. Yes. All of us do. Um, I was, um, I, I think the sign's fit, it's not lit, it looks, uh, it's within the size that's there, and, um, it should be fine. And we have approved the big yeah. ones. It's like so, grand, the grand, it's just yeah. it's there, and it's, it's, uh, it so, works for the property. So, is there any discussion on the sign? No, I'm not with it, it's if, okay. If there isn't, yeah. uh, you can take the motion. So moved. Second. Uh, so I have a motion and a second to approve an application seeking a special permit under zoning regulation section 
8.6.13 for two walls mounted signs that exceed the maximum square footage for property located at 280 Salmonbrook Street uh, as per uh, information provided to the town in file Z-6S24. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. The next one, we just heard a lot of testimony from the change for the commercial center. Uh, if you want to start that discussion tonight, Paula, are you I, interested in Eric? So if people have time, it's uh, uh, I'm willing to start that discussion. Sure. I, I, I am, I guess, willing to start, but I have to tell you, I. There's an awful lot to think about here, mm. and I'm, I guess I don't really know what the status is of the study committee on, that's apparently ongoing. I don't know when it is likely to end. We have a member of that committee right here. Yeah. Well, what uh, do you think, Eric? Mike, Abby, you can yeah, turn me up. We have another member right yeah. here. Abby, you can turn me up on this, but the conservative estimate, if you want my opinion, is a year. I, 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 I remember that the committee is only going to make recommendations um, to various groups, including possibly this group, to look at the center zones. The committee can't change the zones, so that would then start the clock on a whole other process. So it's going to be a few years. A few years. Yeah, so few years. we need to. Um, Nothing happens to us. Yeah, I was going to say, but we are starting to get feedback on these kinds of right. precedent and ideas, and so we'll be able to get that feedback in the coming weeks about what people have given and feel about the preservation and reuse and mixed use. So I'll, I'll go, so because I wrote down some observations listening to the public comment and whatnot. Um, I already said a few of them, but I'm going to reiterate with some additional emphasis that, uh, again, there's a thought process out there that changing for this particular property actually harms the property. It does not. It opens it up for some additional uses, which in my opinion helps the property to thrive. This property is going to deteriorate if it's left. We already see it happening in our center. It's clear what's going to happen if we don't allow the homeowner, the landowner, give them some additional things that they can do on this property to help it continue to thrive. And um, the applicant made an excellent case. I enjoyed his presentation, both in the package and in showing us historic buildings, that some of them are being treated better than others, but it, there's ample proof in our center where commercial buildings in all three of the zones are maintaining their historic character in various um, states and are being used for other uses than the center common zone and they're doing just fine. I heard somebody comment about Simsbury. Um, I hate to bring up Simsbury, it's a competitor town to us, but still. Um, Simsbury, look what Simsbury's done with its traditional older historic buildings that are now in commercial uses. The ice cream place, there's numerous other businesses that are in residential houses. Simsbury has a thriving commercial center with a strong, strong historical look, feel, and presence. I don't actually know of a single property in their center that isn't impeccable. I wish some landowners in our center could yes. take note of what's going on in our neighbor town. Um, I heard some commentary around the willingness to slice up the property. I, uh, I'll do it if it if the board decides it. But making a homeowner have to deal with multiple zones on a single piece of property just seems. I don't know what it accomplishes actually. Um, and uh, I already gave my thing on the center co uh, center study of what we're looking at and uh, what we are doing, what we aren't doing. Um, there was some comments about us looking at historic districts. Abby, clean that up. We don't look at historic districts. The Board of Selectmen does. Um, we did receive a presentation, nothing more. Um, and uh, the center study doesn't change zones. This committee changes zones. So that's my thoughts on it. I think it's um, things that we need to do to keep um, these older buildings and properties viable. I don't see it as a negative. Here's my take. Um, you know, we've heard wonderful things about the applicant. I believe he is you know, well-intentioned, a good person, but the zoning change is forever on the property. It 
that, and so you can't put a lot of weight on one person. In 100 years, nobody in this room is going to be alive. Sorry, folks. It's just the way it is. <laughs> um, so you have to, you know, somebody's got to be the line. As you go up Salmon Brook, there's a series of beautiful old houses built as single family houses, and this is the edge. Somebody's got to be the edge. If you move the edge, then the next house in the line can make the same exact argument that he made, and I can't think of a principal basis to say no. You know, now, I mean, I know it's a slippery slope argument, but it's a well respected in the law uh, slippery slope argument in this context. It's been recognized in zoning cases. It was recognized before zoning existed in cases involving restrictive covenants, that if you had a restrictive covenant that covered, said only single family use in this zone, and somebody came in and said, you know, well, right next to me, there's, you know, a tannery, and it's really not a nice place to have a house. Courts would focus on, is this house in the center of the zone, or is it at the edge of the zone? And if it's at the edge of the zone, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't grant it. I mean, if you had a, a restrictive covenant that was around for, you know, 100 years, and now you got a tannery on one side and something else awful on the other, a smelter, and you say, I'm the only single-family house left, take this restrictive covenant off of me, courts would do it. But not if you're the edge and everybody else on the other side of you is a single-family house, which is basically the situation here. They gave us a list of, you know, houses that are not single-family, and anymore and have you know other uses like the Brignall house but they are not in the same zone that he is in that's the other side of the zone so I do not favor a change of zone I mean I we could be very sympathetic to special permit applications for center edge and there are a lot of uses that are possible in center edge we're not depriving him of all commercially viable uses of the property by keeping it where it is I work in Simsbury. I know what Eric's talking about. I think we do need more movement in the center. I, we need uh, low-income housing that I, I would be inclined to. You know, I, when I think about this application, I think about the we've had someone coming to us in the past on the corner of Hungary Route 20. You know, that property is vacant, no one can really figure out house. what to do with it, and I think they want to change the zone or so they can have more uses for that property as well. So, you know, we just had an open discussion on that one. There was no application for us, but, you know, I don't think we were willing to budge on that one at that given time. That was for, like, an intense... I yeah, it was, it was, it was, yeah that, that was for a Bunch of really yeah. intense apartment. Yeah. But it was... Yeah. Would it require a zone change? No. No. Require, it was a text uh, amendment. The text, text amendment, amendment. Text, amendment. text amendment. Text amendment. To allow, uh, because right now there's the restriction for the five acres. Five acres, that's they, what they're that, right. that, so that's that, it. They, did, they weren't looking for a zone. They wanted us to reduce the acreage so they could put 30 units on two acres. I don't know. It's, I, don't know. I, I think it was 30 on two. That was going to be a tough one. Would a text amendment have been better for this ap applicant? Because really, he, well, he could do the limited, but of course the, the uh, print shop was already a business. So um, the it's, been, it's been abandoned. So the the language of the non or the grandfather is very specific. Okay. So it would have to be a print shop or something incredibly similar to that. Okay. It doesn't open it up to any Anything sort else. of commercial use. Okay. Yeah, I'd like, I'd, like to, I'd like to see the property. I mean, be put to good use, though, that's yeah. sure, because it, leaving it vacant turns into that Hungary Road property where yeah. you're just sitting yeah. there trying yeah. to figure out what to do with it. Bob, I just, I did want to just address some comment again, going back to you know, your thoughts on it, and you know, you'll, you'll okay. decide how you decide, but... Sure. Um, it, a little I, I louder, wanna, Eric. Oh, I'm sorry. Head, yeah, you're, you're, uh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I, I do want to remind, and the applicant said it, and I think it's the, it's the, the it's the hammer in the back that I think I'm always afraid of. Um, if we don't do something, and I understand the philosophy, the building's going to get torn down. And that's mm. what we don't want to happen. I honestly believe by changing the zone, we're helping him protect the building. Because 
it can get knocked right now. All the buildings on the property can get raised. We don't have the ability to put in, a, in any kind of requirements that he maintain the facade or anything like that in granting a zone change, though. No, you cannot condition a zone change. Right. But he is subject to the same rules. Yes. Well, we had a member of the public ask us to look at the bottom 10. You know, the one that jumped out at me is the fueling station required by special permit. You know, so obviously it would be hard to get that to fitting into the general area of the property, but that's one of them that I think, you know, someone might be focusing on and saying, if you allow this zone change, you're going to have a gas station sitting there. Good. 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 I'll, I'll add my, I get to go towards the end here, right? So I'm sympathetic to, we like to have the old houses and, you know, families living, times change. I grew up in an old house. I, I've gone through some of this ourselves, and times change, and we have to support the change to support our historic district. I'm not going to mention Simsbury by the end because they've done some good things with their historic structures. Um, I am. I like the idea. I know uh, Commissioner Myers doesn't, but putting that little L um, does give the buffer, so you don't have that cascade. It. it puts a spot zone buffer, it doesn't for the property of the south. But um, a historical member mentioned that today and the applicant said they talked about it. I, I kind of like that idea. I would tell you. To give that uh, little protection on the street frontage. Um, you know, my concern is, um, it's coming up to budget season, right? We, we pay taxes in this town. If I can't do something, why do I keep that print shop? I mean, that's being taxed, right? There's, there's incentives to not keep structures because they get taxed. And I want to support, I'm not saying that I want to support to make taxes, I want to support it to have it interesting for someone to own it. That place has been vacant since I've lived here, yeah. that whole lot. And the house has been going down. Um, why people don't want to live as a residence, I don't know. We had two people in the real estate market comment, I, I don't know. That's because it's, it's too much traffic for if you have kids and dogs. It's hard, hard to heat, I've yeah. heard lead paint. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Probably not wired for whatever you Probably need. Probably has the old tube wiring. So, so I look at it as a balancing act of supporting the historical structures, and I greatly respect the historical society what they're trying to do. You know, I know uh, Mr. Ross and Mr. Morgan, and they want to do what's right for this town. We want to do what's right for this town. We have the, the rights of the property owner here, what he wants to do, and I was. I'm looking how we protect the concept of what you were talking about, Robert, which is you don't, we don't want it to be torn down and make it into a gas station. Nobody on this, I'm going to say nobody on this board wants that. No. Right? Um, you know, so doing some of those things with the zone change and where we draw the lines might help protect some of that. Um, but I, I, I really want to keep that print shop. I think that's a unique facet of town. It's historical. That's a part um, of our history. Yeah, history. In the house itself. And, uh, sorry, Ken. Public hearing's closed. <laughs> it was a saddle shop at 1850. Okay, you can say that. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I'm leaning to where some of the other commissioners said that I, I'd like to do something to... to Look at what we're doing is protecting the structure, not the other way around. I agree. And, and I do think, and I, I didn't want to really want to sit today because I didn't know what I was going to do because I had <coughs> mixed feelings. I, I don't want to see it commercial, but I do want something done. And I, I know we're not supposed to rely on the, the good ideas of the applicant because we can't hold him to it. But he has good ideas, and I, to me, what, what's been very appealing is by keeping those snips uh, in 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 the edge, in the center edge, that does put it a boundary here. Mm -hmm. So you are not so apt to get the creep. Though the lady next, or whoever it is next door, is not is not. I think it's Emily, but the one before her, uh, they do back up to the pharmacy and all. So that's who knows. But this does give some feeling of trying to protect the uh, center edge historical feeling of the town there. I think 
that's kind of a, but it is, it's, it's a toughie. I, I, but you have somebody who wants to do good things with it, and to see it used. And you can't do it by a text amendment, by saying, going about it a different way, saying in the center edge. I mean, there always is the text amendment, but yeah. that op opens it up to every property. But every property, property, which is right. not what anybody wants. Or what would be advantageous. I you know, I'm kind of... Well, I, I suppose the text amendment, increasing the number of uses by special permit and the center edge, uh, if you don't add the gas station, it protects your gas station. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, the text, the, the text <laughs> amendment, yeah. the text amendment process. We could you could change the zone on the print shop, yeah, because that is a separate lot, and that gives it the commercial for the, the idea. But then, if you want to put the apartments, you have, have the to text, text amendment. Right? Is the office allowed the, in the in the garage uh, on the center edge? Yeah. Oh. The wife, if the wife is you, in the office. Professional had, office yeah. plus special yeah. permit, yeah. I think. Yeah, I thought we had covered that thing. Special office. <laughs> yeah. office. Yeah. Well, home occupations are covered or permitted. Yeah. They don't even need That's a special permit. That's not a home occupation. Professional, professional offices, businesses, yeah. Yeah. Medical. medical offices, yeah. special permits. Special so I think okay. that would go yeah. to an audiologist. So the applicant permit. didn't ask yeah. for a text amendment, so. Well, yeah. yeah. Then you had a member of public state. They have a 3,200 square foot home. They yeah. want to get rid of it. They yeah. can make five units out of it. Yeah. Not even that we don't that want. That's what we don't want. Thing. So that's that the text amendment applies to the whole, yeah, the whole zone, so. all the way down the street. So that would not work. Yeah. Just the whole center edge goes down towards the. Mm -hmm. the all the way down. How far? Plains Park and yeah. the Historical Society. It's in the. It's in the. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't yeah. Yeah, I know. Sandbrook? Yeah. Sandbrook Park. Sandbrook Park, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. John's house. You know, I, I really do. I got to say, I, I kind of like Paul. I was hoping to become ill this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. So here, here I am. But I, I'm... I gotta say, I'm troubled that the, that the historical society people were kind of not very happy with seeing the thing go forward, and they were afraid they will lose the historic district somehow. On the other hand, I I really do think that at the end of the day, planning and zoning commissions make decisions in a way, and, and maybe they shouldn't. But in a way, you do look at your applicant. Do you, do you think that the person is is uh, experienced and has good intentions and will be able to execute those intentions? And if you like what those intentions signify, generally as a commission, and I've seen this in a lot of towns, you say, yeah, go ahead. You approve what you like, you, you find a reason to reject what you don't like. And in this particular case, I, to me, it's a, it's an attractive opportunity to, to do something. I think with those little edges of keeping the edge uh, would, would be a, a, a kind of a nice, um, little bit of a security blanket for the center edge. I mean, I guess a, a stronger historic overlay would be nicer too, you know, yeah. where, where it was very limited on mm -hmm. It's a, some of the uses that we're concerned about, and Abby, don't, I don't even memorize it, but is there a minimum lot size to have a gas station? No. So, but you could put that in the regulations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Yep, yeah, for under a tax amendment, yeah. There's ways that if there's some uses in there you don't want to creep in. Well, a car wash, somebody said a car wash was yeah, but you could, you know, I don't know what the size of that lot is. Um, I can look it up. Might be but there again, that's all special permit. permit, and I can't see this. this yeah, it is special permit. permit. Yeah. But it would be hard to yeah. say no if the land, if that lot was vacant. Oh, I'd have no problem saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I probably won't be here, so I also have to do that. But I think it's, I, I mean, we're all. 
again, what we all want to do is, is what's good for the group. And Eric, mm -hmm. I like your comment that the you know, proposal by the applicant does mean something, right? That the, and, and we invited him back. Cause yeah, we all, so we, all, we all liked the idea when he came as the informal hearing. Yeah. Yeah. And we invited I think we all we were unanimous in that. We were unanimous, and I think the unanimous uh, our comments were we would have an open mind. Yeah. So this is the time to have that. So I'd like to, uh, I'm starting to get fried here as the day goes. I think the clips got me yesterday, so uh, we'll continue this with our next meeting, if that's all right. Well, should, should you have to come? Should we have, um, uh, have we had enough discussion for Abby to possibly draft something that has your sliced up zone? And um, well, not, are we not there yet? So one thing when it comes to doing a split zone like that um, so there is a provision in the regulations a lot line on zone boundary in the case of a lot line in more than one district the provisions of the less restrictive district may be applied for a distance of not over 30 feet into the more restrictive district provided that such lot has frontage on a street in the less restrictive district I know. But I heard the word too late. Too late. I heard the word yeah. May. Too late. 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 Too there's Too late. Too late. Too late. Too you Too late. 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 Uh, what he said about the creep, the properties next door can't say that. Okay, so you're not one. concerned about the use standpoint, so mm -hmm. it's simply to show the zone boundaries yes. being. Yes. Okay. That's, that's what I heard, yeah, from, that's what yeah, I heard yeah. from the testimony we had. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Would that affect the act? They could still use it, but it would affect the access to the other parking lot if they had to go that way. Right? <coughs> no. I don't think so. I don't know. Still. Okay, it wouldn't. Have, it's a good we'll question, look, right? We'll, yeah. we'll look at the map some more. Yeah, 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 but it'd be yeah. a building. That's a good point, though. You, you know what I mean? Because everything's in the way, and it's going to be at the far end and the back side of it. Yeah. They're going to have access to that back yeah. side. That's true. And that would I think the applicant, the applicant mentioned the 3050, so yeah. I hope they looked at it. So this is an e this is an easy application. It's to change the zone or not. Yeah. But I think so. That the homework for the next meeting is simply can can we see a visual of what it looks like yeah. with the with the dual zones on the property and how it abuts the neighboring property. I don't know if you can ask that. Now I'm worried because the public hearing public is closed. closed, and if this is more information coming in. So let, me, about, let me look at that. How about this? The commission, you are welcome to go our zoning maps online. You can okay. go to the GIS. Yep. 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 You can go to the assessor's yeah, webpage, has the GIS. You can zoom in on it and you can. Yeah. No, I You're right, I got it. Yeah. There's a measuring tool on it. Yep. Yep. Knock yourselves out. Yep, I like it. And I will remind the commission the Step two forward. public hearings are closed. So we are uh, not to receive any more public testimony or comment. If you see somebody at the coffee shop, yeah, we don't talk Paula has that. reminded me many times that I have to say no. Yep, we just have. Once it's closed, we're not supposed to discuss it with anybody. <laughs> Paul has said somebody got mad at you. I know we can talk about something else. Okay, so just to recap, um, item A, which was the uh, woodworking, we have some guidance for our next meeting. Item C, we'll continue the discussion at the next mm -hmm. meeting. Okay? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, anything from staff? Item nine. Nope. Okay. Item 10, anything from the commission? Nope. 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 Okay. Nothing. If there's nothing else, Abby, anything else? Okay, I'll take the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. We are adjourned. We're gone. Yeah. <laughs>